Mr. Loftus, Luke, yes. Allah, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as you can see, you got we got the new setup. I like it. It's vibing in here today, man. Vibing, man. What do you reckon, bro? You, you feeling it? It's the drinks, bro. It's the E numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I got my cream soda. Uh, that's that's for effect, the bro. The mint, the, the mint, mint tea. tea. Well, we might have to have a toilet break in in the middle of this podcast. You know, that I'm feeling it, bro. Okay, so Luke. I thought let's get started with just a few. Actually, we kind of broke the ice off camera or kind of some, some on some of the B-roll. But let's get cracking with uh, the real important question, yeah? Um, you're Jamaican, right? That's the one. All right. So when you go back to your mum's, mm-hmm. what's the one f- Jamaican dish that you, you'd you like her to cook for you when you're... Like, or you request? Stew peas. Stew peas? You peas. Okay. I describe, it's hard to describe. It's like, I don't know if, if you had pea soup before. No. Nah, well. so it's like, it's made with kidney beans. Yeah. And it's got dumplings in it. But the soup is basically the same as the stew peas, but the stew peas has got meat in it as well. Yeah. And that and white that rice. That's banging, fam. Bruv, that, like that, bruv, your Ooh. belly's full. No, we call that lubia, bruv. Lubia, bruv. Is that serious? Yeah, yeah man. Bro. Yeah, man, that's what you're about. That, that you know the thing, that, the thing that uh, they lost me with the word vegan in, in front, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, know do you get vegan ones though? You can because you can make stew peas, yeah. When you without have meat, without meat in it, yeah. in essence, it's vegan. Yeah, by yeah, yeah of course, of course. But the thing yeah. is, in Jamaica, before all this vegan stuff, a lot of the rasters in there would eat idol, which is they'll only What's eat that? certain foods. So it's only foods you can grow. If you can't grow it, basically, you don't eat it. Idol. Yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 it, it, in essence, it's, it's free of. A bunch of preservatives. Oh, I see. Uh, I see, I see. Even meat. Certain men will eat fish with it, maybe. Mm-hmm. But generally, the diet. Are rusters most, like yeah. vegetarians? Yeah, bro. Nothing. Oh, of them. Okay. Most of them are. So it, that was normal. So vegan was like, well, what's this new thing? Like, <laughs> there's a lot of dishes that you can make. They've gone too far, though, bro. Vegan. They have, they have, they have, they have. Come on, bro. All that, <laughs> that They've corn. gone too far. Have you ever tasted corn? Yeah. No, no that, but you know what? If if you grew up, meat. the thing is, if you grew up in the UK as a Muslim. You've tasted corn at a, 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 a point. Dead. Mm. And ah, the fact that you can eat me, do you know what I'm saying? The fact yeah, that you yeah, can yeah. eat me and then you're forced to eat that madness, bruv. But do you know what it is? I tell you what, what the problem is, yeah? Is when people eat vegan foods, they try to make vegan foods taste like meat. Yeah. It's just, if you don't want to eat, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't eat, eat it. it. Don't There's eat it. There's a lot of stuff yeah, you can yeah, have that's yeah, veg yeah. in it. Like, it's fine. I mean, not that many, but yeah. I'm dressing it up. But you know what this is wrong? I need to find the evidence for this, to be fair. I shouldn't. Google it, Google it, bro. But there's a hadith that's meant to say that don't yeah. make your stomach be a graveyard. Yes. And we get too much in the habit of eating meat in excess, because mm. especially halal-wise, we can go anywhere and get halal meat in terms mm. of chicken shop yeah, and yeah, bad as well. True. Not even yeah. cooked, like, not even like a proper yeah. thing. You can go anywhere. <laughs> but it starts to get real techy when you don't want to do that. You're like, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. I want to eat something healthy. Where do I go? And I think we've got to get out of the habit of that as Muslims. I think because, again, we're from a culture where you're supposed to Kill eat what you eat, eat Kill what you eat and eat the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. These times, man, saying you can have six wings, four breasts. Now that's about three chickens. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Leaving, leaving it hanging around. But so I agree with the premise of something's vegan. But I just think the application is just it's just consumers that are suck you in it. Have you have you slaughtered a sheep before? Bro? No, no, I might have to do it still. Well, like, I tr- my dad made me do it at fourteen, bro. Really? Like he sprung it on me as well. He was like, because you know when 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 you have a baby after yeah, the, yeah. the what's it called the. Giga. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. So he didn't do it for me at fo- like when I was born. Mm-hmm. But, um, I didn't really go into why. I didn't ask. Mm-hmm. He doesn't answer the questions. But anyway. <laughs> 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 do you know what I'm saying? Just, just, so we went to the farm and um, he said, like, we're going to... I thought he was going to do it. And then he goes, listen, jump in to the pen, find the sheep. I actually explained it into Jude's one, didn't it? Am I... Am I uh, yeah. But I'll, I'll explain it to you anyway. Yeah. I done a hashi, mm. grabbed it from the thing, boom, tripped him up, neon mm. belly. Done. And then we tied up the legs, mm. and then, bro, we're well, like, when I when I took the, the knife to its throat, bro, mm. um, as a fourteen year old, it changes your perspective on, bro, respect this the meat, is bro. what I'm saying, <laughs> but this is what I'm saying, yeah, and this is even these kids that are running around going and doing stuff to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you understand the idea of life and taking life, that's in it, bro. Because it gives up, bro. Value, right? You know it it actually, there's a point where you just like it just gives up. But also, and this is why it's so important, yeah. Um, we eat meat, yeah, and there's a doctor in the house, so you might have to ask the doctor, yeah? But obviously, when you're in shock, your body lets off certain chemicals, yeah? Now, Is that true, bro? <laughs> <laughs> so, you think of it this way, just like, okay. You think of it this way, yeah? When you're eating animals that have been stunned and whatever else before they die, you're going to eat meat that's eating, eating in that way, yeah? Mm, that's that's been sold in that way. So, yeah. the piece that you see, the giving up element, 
is partly to do with the way we're slaughtering. They give up because they know it's their time, isn't it? And have they, you seen Avatar, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When when that that dog creature, and then they have to kill it. Remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then she says that kind of uh, like, you know, that prayer it over is, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what, it, what she says, but that whole thing about being respectful to the animal and 100%. and and I think when I and then the the the, the eye opening thing about it was mm. once we slaughtered it, there was a whole process afterwards. Yeah. So. We took the skin, so he t- he taught me how to. We strung it up. Yeah. Obviously, get let the blood. Well, actually, it was yeah. We strung it up. We took the head. Yeah. yeah? We burnt all the hair off the head. Yeah. So we took that home. We ate the f- the face, my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the cheeks and. Well, a suit like that in Jamaica. Bro. Yeah, that's it's what I'm saying, bro. Like that yeah. Jamaica, yeah. Brother, your head just popped to the top of the. Boom. Seat, <laughs> it's <laughs> trust. <laughs> you know those Indiana Jones things? A hundred. <laughs> That's like, it. What's, what's, this, this what's so wrong good? with that though? This is so good. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. But bro, again, if you're scornful of it, then maybe you shouldn't be in. Yeah, yeah, that's it's it, bro. It's value, bro. 100%. You see what you said about teaching people the value of human life yeah. is a key thing. And I think it, you learn, again, even from the martial arts perspective, it's humbling when you realise, okay, cool, there's an element of surrendering. Yeah. There's an element of how f- how um, finite my ability existence to... Is. Yeah, existence. Yeah, is. Yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah. We're not... It's not something that we, we can just do everything with. And I think in that sense, that's why I think everybody should just maybe slaughter an animal. 100%. I mean, because bro. you're going to check it. Like, uh, you've got a youth that goes to the shop again, like I said, you buys a million chicken wings every single day and he couldn't slaughter an animal if he wanted to, bro. Yeah. I mean, bro. And, and even, I remember, the, you know, the, the, the head, yeah? yeah? I remember I broke one of the teeth. Mm. Like, play, my dad was like, what are you doing? 100%. But even the etiquettes of when you're actually slaughtering yeah. it, you cover like, the animal's eyes so he doesn't see the other animal yeah, getting don't, slaughtered. Do you know uh, I mean? Don't like, slaughter yeah. it in front of the other animals, yeah. face the qibla. Yep. All these things, bruv. And and then we ate, bruv. I don't know if you ate liver before, you like it. or I know there's people that love or hate liver, I'm yeah? against it in terms of taste-wise. Yeah, so so ne- so was I, bruv. So mm. was I. But uh, you haven't tasted liver sh- fr- fresh out the animal, bruv. Everybody says that to me. Everyone says that to me. I, so I, that's the first time I tasted it. It was like we had it with uh, coriander. Like, literally uh, in the farm. Coriander, yeah. Like yeah, onions yeah. and everything. And I, and, and I ate I was like, wow, this is something else, man. Really different. And then we, we took the intestines. It was disgusting, bruv. Stomach. And then my mom had to go and wash them. There was a whole process. So we ate everything, man. Mm. Even the feet. I think that's the one thing that we, de- we didn't eat. We gave it to someone, I think. Yeah. I don't think they have feet, but okay. Sorry, well, Coops? <laughs> this guy, <laughs> blood. <laughs> you know what? I mean, he knew what I meant, blood. Just imagine the sheep, man. Come ten toes. Air force, blood. You know what I'm saying? Check it out. You know the image of coming here. When you go to the shop, bro, when you go to the shop, you want what do you say? See, there you go. That's it. Cow and by the way, bro, by the way, I know this about Jamaicans. Cow for soup. Cow for soup. Tell me now. What type of cow for soup you're gonna realize? <laughs> bro, man, cow for soup will not give you a foot. Show them. That's it. There you go. Big hoof in the, in the in the in the soup, brother. I don't even that. eat that, brother. That's no, a madness. That like jelly. That's... I'm not even on it. Would you I'm eat it though? I'm not going for it. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going for it. I can't, bro. But it tastes nice. See, 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 see that the soup. If they didn't tell you, the soup. You'll eat the soup. It's only when you tell me it's like a foot. Yeah, and the consistency yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, hundred percent. Even tongue, bro. Have you had tongue, tongue. I'm not built for that. That is one thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, that I don't get how people eat it mm. because the, st- the amount of germs in something animal's mouth. Yeah, but you know what they do though. Go on. Because my mum, what she does is she she scrapes. Bro, there's a whole process, yeah, bro. Process, bro. Yeah, 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 so yeah. you you boil it, then you scrape all the thing. Even the off. stomach, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. But because it looks like a tongue, yeah. <laughs> Like and it's and it tastes like what you think a tongue would taste like, bro. Seriously? You get me? It doesn't taste like it's still a bit hairy. Chicken, no, 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 bro. No, 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 it's not hairy, bro. What not hairy is, tongue, man, blood. You know, you have tongue, hair in your tongue, tongue bro. No, man, the tongue buds, bro. Yeah, those little. The you can, tongue buds. <laughs> but another thing I noticed when Jamaicans say foot, yeah, it can start from the hip, by the way. Yeah, hundred percent. That's true, isn't it? Hundred percent. Foot is the whole leg, isn't it? That's what I love. Go on and break your foot. Anything, anything from the hip down. Go on. My mum says to me now. If I go, I've got my knees mashed up now. If I go, if I go to my mum's house and my ears hurting me, she'll tell me this is why you do that it's fighting stuff. And you're mashed. <laughs> it don't matter what it is. I can tell she used the hand as well. Yeah, 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 mum, one hundred percent. I can go home with anything wrong with me. Like, mum, I got a cold. You see, because you're there in people's face, <laughs> running around with them, and they're coughing on you. You see, I'm saying this way you don't have to do stuff. I told you you got bad knees. <laughs> exactly that. I'm not right. I'm cool. Clearly, you know this. You know what I mean? So one yeah, time, she said to me. I think I won something. And she said to me, is that about her? I think it's my mum said to me, she said to me, oh, you're quite good at this, aren't you? <laughs> I thought, hold on, hold on. I've been doing this for a long time, yeah? A really long time. And you just right now think I might be proficient at it. Yeah? Even if I fought in a rubbish comp and got a medal, yeah, yeah. you couldn't believe yeah. that I'd be doing something. I'm like, Ooh, Does she understand, like, what you what do, happens? bro? 
Kind of, yeah, she does. I think has she seen a video of me doing it before? I think she has still. I think she knows. And she see she's 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 on my Instagram. So you see my mom, my mom oh. I don't know why they have Instagram. I think they thought it was gonna be something like Facebook. <laughs> and like, and I'm like, it's not your thing, mum. Still, yeah, like, yeah Facebook's there where where the older lots go. Yeah, on. but she she's got her Instagram. And she follows me on Instagram. And she likes my stuff and she comments. If you read some of the comments, you'll tell it's my mum. It will say something like, "I'm getting told off," <laughs> and it, it can be something random like. Um, it'll be something like a positive that implies a negative. So, you see, I told you you must brush your beard. <laughs> they can't do it though. They I'm just like, can't oh, do it. They, they have to. They have to take you down a couple of pegs yeah, and then bring yeah, you up yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in my yeah, house, so basically, if you have a picture you don't like, if there was a don't like button, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but we need that though. Hundred percent. Moms are there to keep the ego. Dads as well. Dads are worse, yeah, yeah. buff. Do you know what, do you know what it is? Dads don't say it unless you ask them. Yeah, yeah. What do you? Moms need to say it. Yeah, yeah. At any given time, so. What did my mum say? My mum said some, 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 some trash to me today. She said to me, she's talking to me and goes, because no one don't know how I feel. I like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm what the son, I didn't ask you how you That's felt. That's an opener though, yeah? Right, you're the wants, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, cool. All right, mum, all right, cool. Or she could be telling me a story. Well, this is on Instagram or no, face to face? Okay, okay. <laughs> she calls me. My okay. mum calls me. If I, say I stay at my mum's house. Yeah. My mum will come. My mom, before there was Fajr, there was my mum. Yeah. Yeah, my mum was the equivalent of Fajr. Like, she'd walk in. And she'll just start talking to you and ask me if I'm awake. I'm like, Mum, I wasn't awake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. definitely awake now because you've opened the curtains. Mum opens the curtains as well when you're sleeping. Did she open it like violent? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The sound. Yeah. You're getting woken up by the light, the sound, yeah. the breeze, everything under the sun. So my mum was on all of that. So, so waking up for Fajr when I became Muslim was a bit easier because my mum prepped me with that opening the curtains. Yeah. Stuff. It wasn't laying. What, what cracks me up is um, when my mum used to wake me up, she would rub my face and all that type of stuff. But I know if I didn't get up, the bruiser would come in, isn't it? And he's papping you, bruv. He's not. He's going hundred percent straight away, bruv. Serious? One time, one time I might cut this out. I might not. <laughs> but I'm an older man now, so it's fine. It's not child abuse, yeah. So what he did was, I must have just went. Oh, I don't, I don't think you remember it, Evie. But if you're watching, he does watch it, bro. Yeah, yeah. So I must have might, clipped his face like that a little bit, and and then 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 he went dark, yeah. <laughs> and I woke it up the next dark. day. I woke up the next day or the, the same day, whatever. Um, and I went to wash my face and my ears were blue, bruv. Mm. And then I clocked, right, he papped me up. Because I remember getting smashed blood on the bed, <laughs> like bang, bang. <laughs> and then he just left me there and then just went downstairs, bruv. And then I woke up with a blue ear, bruv. Definitely, but it's the first collie ear. First collie ear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah, bruv. That's, what that's it. it. You don't disrespect your dad. But you know what, it's mad because, again, it's weird, it's weird. And this is why there's some things in life that the Sahaba used to wrestle and sometimes you've got to be regulated a little bit. Yeah, 100%. You've got to know you're human. You've got to know, right, cool, this is the limits of my body. And I feel like we don't push our body to limits, but we chat. You know what, this is what I'm going to ask you later, bro. Do you know what I mean? So people don't push their body to limits, but they chat. So they'll say, oh, I'm excellent. I'm this, I'm that. And you're like, but well, what have you done to prove that? Does that make sense? Mm. Because believe me, it's unprovable. So you doing it will just show you how limited you are. But it's only the people that don't do that that have got that that, that, that overconfidence. Overconfidence. Yeah. I, mean, so I say about, about fighting all the time. I'm like, when I wasn't training regularly to fight, and that's right. This is on the premise that I could fight before I trained, which is subjective, yeah. But in my head, I could fight. Yeah. When I thought I could fight, the idea of having to prove myself was something that I felt regularly I had to do. Mm. So road rage, someone's chatting rubbish. Raw swear man's looking at me. You kind of want to follow it up, but when you understand how to fight. You've already assessed the situation. And my cousin told me this the same as I was talking about earlier. Yeah. It's a long time ago. He said, Sometimes I'm talking to someone and I've beaten them up and gone to jail. In his head. In his head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm talking to them and I've beat them up. The feds have come. I've been nicked. Yeah. I'm saying, and he's to my kids through the, through, the, through, the, through the perspects. Then I'm in the cell. I've punched up someone else. I've got an extra three years on my side. He's done the whole sentence in his head. Is and it I raining, my guy? Yeah, it's it's raining. Raining. I was thinking, what the hell is that sound? I was like? thinking, what's going yeah. on? Sorry, we're going to have to. What the hell is going on, bro? With the bro? rain check, with the rain, yeah? That's nah, it's fine. Just oh, carry on, bro. Yeah, carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he, when he told me that, I started to realise that I do that a lot now. Like, now people are talking to me, I'm like, bro, your stance ain't even right. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, there's no way I'm going to get away with this. So sometimes, What do you mean? Like, if, if I'm arguing with someone, mm. I don't feel the need to prove myself. Oh, I see. So Zaid had, said the same thing, bro. I've had one yeah. time, which is, it was actually my fault to be honest with you, yeah. But I don't like, I'm very, very funny about people swearing at me mm. in the car, yeah? Because <laughs> your car is not you. 
that <laughs> big van you're driving is not you, bruv. Like, that is not you. I can be driving whatever I'm driving. When I get out and you get out, it's me and you. So, I, once I was going towards a roundabout and I, sh- I, I was going to go, but I should have given way to my right. Mm. But it's, it's one of the roundabouts where it's like, it's a bit dark. 50 50 like, a little go. bit. Yeah. But he went past me. When he's going past me, he's going to swear that he's sticking his hands up. I said, all right, you're bad, yeah, because i got time today. I'm late. Like, I, pray, I think I prayed every salah I meant to pray. I'm all right, <laughs> bruv, yeah. I'm late for whatever else I meant to be doing. So I said, cool. So I followed the brother, pulled up, he's got out of the car, and his missus has got out of the car. And I walked up to the car, and he's probably about 15 meters. His missus got out of the car? Missus was in the car with him. Oh, they were oh. going out. They didn't even realise I was following them. Oh, okay. So I got out of the car, and I walked up, and I walked proper up to him. How long ago was this, man? Uh, seven years ago. I thought you meant yesterday or no, something. No, 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 okay, no, no, no. okay, okay, okay. That'd be incriminating. <laughs> so I walked up to him, and I walked up to him, and I said, bro, I'm sorry, and I gave him a hug. And he, 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 he thought this brother... How's that incriminating, bro? Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? But he thought this brother is nuts. And yeah. he looked at me like... Where was this? Black Heath, bro. Oh, okay. So it was a bit gentrified. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Black Heath. Black, that's what I thought, bro. Yeah. Right in your mouth. Yeah. He, he drove past and yeah. gave me the wickedest, I'm a bad man speech in front yeah. of his guy. I reckon he tapped her before he saw it. I reckon he went, babe, watch this. <laughs> you see you every finger up yeah 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 yeah. shaking signs I said cool you're bad yeah but when I got to him I realised I literally probably could have ruined him and I could have ruined him but it would have ruined me yeah does that make sense firstly I'm not that type of I don't like but you're not a civilian as well that's another thing you see what I'm saying, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah, a civilian yeah. it's like you have to behave different man. To, but, but yeah. even then more than that I'm a Muslim that's so that's even true. before that yeah. the only the main upgrade I've got that allows me to even think that I no, should know better. And even if it's not that I know better, it's that I'm accountable, bro. Mm. He could take a, I could lick him down. He takes a shahada tomorrow. That's it, bro. And he's fine. Or he's you could push him, he hit the back of his head, yeah, he dies, bro. Or he becomes a paraplegic or yeah, all these things. Yeah. Them. So for yeah. me, but the confidence that I knew that what I was able to do, I assessed and said, I don't want to do what I'm able to do. I think people ask themselves too many questions. Yeah. So in life, in general, when people get into fights in the streets because they, they question themselves, they question what they're able to do and they want to find an avenue to prove it. And it's only in the moment that they want to prove it. And then when it's over, they realise, oh, hold on a minute, I've messed up here by trying to prove something. Yeah. And I don't think people should, um, again, I feel like you should gradually prove to yourself what you're capable of doing in a safe environment and it will potentially put you off from having to do it yeah. being controlled 100%. by the situation. 100%. Because oh, I want to touch upon, I've written it down anyway, I'm going to t- touch upon this later on. Mm. But I want to get started on you, bruv. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Because... I've, I've, this first time, well, second time, you came on the, to, to Legion yeah. to roll on, on, on Friday, and this is the second time we've met, mm-hmm. and every brother that I've spoken to, Allah Mubarak, bro, has had only good words to say about you, and, um, like, mashallah, you, you level in jiu-jitsu and all of that, you've got a lot of respect in the community, mashallah, like, so, um, I res- uh, uh, so I, that, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to get you on as well, bro. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, like the reason why we have this platform mm. is for people like you. Mm. Does that make sense? To kind of make sure that our community understands that there's people doing things. Does that make sense? Mm. Positive stuff. Mm. Um, but like with every, every podcast, I want to get into your martial arts, that origin story. Yeah? Because yeah. everyone's got an origin story, in it? How they got in. So, yeah. Why don't you tell us a bit about how, how you got into martial arts? Right. Uh, first of all, yeah. This is random. Um, there's a du'a that to say that may Allah may be better than people think of me and protect me um, and conceal what what they don't know. I'm not. I'm all right. I just I've managed. I get on, and the good things get highlighted sometimes. I should chuck dirt in your face, isn't it? Because I just praised you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but but so so I have that. I'm just kind of humbling, if that makes any sense. I mean, but my jujitsu started yet, yeah, or not my my martial arts journey started when I was young. I'm I'm a generation from. Karate kid, not this kung fu kid with Will Smith. Will Smith broke my heart, bro. Broke, broke my heart in so many ways. The worst thing about it, I watched it that just literally two days ago with my kids. Scene for scene, it's the same, but it's different. You can't Except that whole car bit, like which was a bit random. You you can't, no, you can't, you can't. You can't. How did they that, sell it to us, bro? I don't understand, bro. I don't understand. <laughs> I, I, I remember thinking, and Jackie Chan as well, who's a kung fu guy yeah, from day. From day. Put someone in it who does straight kicks and nah. PIs, bro. Yeah, you don't need yeah, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. We need bad form, all that yeah, yeah, stuff, bro. Yeah, yeah. So I remember starting karate when I was about probably about seven or eight. Okay. And um, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't karate kid. It was very much I did Shotokan as well, so it's okay. very much direct lines, form. Yeah. And it was good for discipline. And Who good is for your form. sensei? 
Um, Odia Sensei. I can't remember his name right now. Where was it? Where was it? It was in Sydney. Okay. Sydney, yeah. But he was black guy, Algerian guy, black guy. guy. Black black guy, guy. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I might know. Don, him. his name was. We called him Don. Yeah. Short, kind of muscly still. I've noticed okay. the theme with everyone starting with karate first. Bro, we it's karate. Everyone. Everyone. It's, bro, it's, it's, it's the go to. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's so mad because. And by the way, it's, the same. it's everywhere. Is it, you reckon? Yeah, you need to get a bit closer sorry, to sorry. the mic. Just pull your chair up a little bit yeah. and just lean back. Yeah. You know what? You know the mic here. Yeah? Mm. If you could just swivel it towards. You want swivel, you know? No, 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 not that bit. Not that bit. Actual head. Yeah, there you go. Cool. That's it. So um, oh, that's perfect. I remember starting karate. I enjoyed it, but it used to get me nervous because when you finish karate, you have to do um, your grading. You do it in front of like a panel, mm. and it's yeah. really, really. It's like everyone's watching you. And then it's like a, doing a driving test. So you know like when you see them cross or tick? So you see them look down at the paper. Yeah, yeah. They look yeah, back yeah. at you and they're thinking, ah, oh, I messed up. But you've got to carry on the sequence. And it's very Japanese, right? So you have to walk a certain amount of paces. Then you yeah. bow. Then you yeah. bow. 100%. Then you bow. And then you have to like, when they do the kata, you have to come back to the same spot Takes and all that finish, madness. Yeah? Yeah, 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 And it's even the closure. Yeah, yeah. And, you <sighs> certain way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and your ki has got to be good. Like, your ki I didn't like that, man. Bro, the ki- it's what's mad about the ki, yeah? The ki, in your head, it's going to sound... Gangster. You sound like a waste. You man, sound man. like a plonker, <laughs> bro. Like you go, ah! Like whoa, 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 hey, bro, hey, bro. I see man generate the most energy. They're fronting the muddy street, but ah! No, no, that's how. Hey, look, look, you know what it is, bro? Yeah, like this is the thing. You know, I'm glad you said it, bro. Yeah, because. Do you remember Zach, bro? Yeah, bro. I would never say it. I'm like, I'm not. Yeah. What am I having shouting for, blood? But I used to feel awkward, I'm, bro. It's all yeah. <laughs> like, come on, bro. It's mad, isn't it? Like, it's, meow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's bro? Crazy. And there's all different yeah. ones. Like, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some bitches go. It's, it's a bit more greasy. But I remember when my co- when my coach was it's mad, bro. And you could hear like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shot, the commando. Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah, that was bad, bro. That was bad. Yeah. But that's what I thought it was gonna be like. Yeah, yeah, but. you're just like seven, blood. That's what I'm saying to you. So to me, I was like, but I. I remember the crane kick and many taught me a crane yeah, kick. Yeah, where's the crane kick? But I did it for a while. And I remember one time... I went how to long? How long did you do it for? About three years. Okay. Yeah. And then my mum, I was going to the grade and I was nervous, 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 nervous. Because I think when I was younger, I had... I think I think I had anxiety issues. Mm. I would look in the back now, yeah? So yeah. things would make me get nervous. So I remember being nervous, 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 nervous. My mum said, look, you look, you're nervous, bro. And we're about to go to the grading. Do you want to do this from now on or not? And I just said, no. So I stopped. Mm. So I went to secondary school and football was my love all the way through. And I enjoyed football. And um, I played football. I played football. I got scouted for Wimbledon when Wimbledon was good. Mm. Um, Crazy gun down times, yeah? Them times, yeah, yeah. Proper premier, premiership, them times. So I got, I, I, I had a good run doing football, but I still started a bit late. Cause how, how old were you when you started? I started playing Sunday League football when I was, my first club was when I was like 11. I didn't play that many games and then I stopped. Right, that's late. That's what I mean. And then, how's that late? Was, was bro, that like kids, 11? Played, yeah, bro. Kids play like five aside Sunday league. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's seven aside. I swear straight into 11 aside. But don't you think that whole system is whack, bro? Football's weird. How, how did you get even like this? It's like there's no pathways, bro. It's really weird. weird. Because you look at it, yeah, it's a spectator sport. You forget at home, let's just forget the sky deal right now. In a stadium, you've got 50,000 people. Mm. Yeah? Plus 50,000 people. Let's say you've got 50,000. And 50 people. 44 of those people are either the linesmen, the referee, or the players. Yeah. Think about the percentage of people in a stadium that are playing football mm. in comparison to the people that are doing it, that are watching football. It's not designed for the spectators. Whereas when you go to a jiu-jitsu event, everyone in there does jiu-jitsu. Right. I got you, you don't get people going to watch it that don't do it. You don't get people going to watch a wrestling. Mm. It, you know I mean? In America, you get people that watch wrestling, but they probably did wrestling. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everyone goes for a... Yeah, yeah. For a period. So, yeah, yeah. so it's a bit different from saying... And they wrestle at the same level that they're watching. So don't invest in what they're watching. That's why you've got the, the, the college draft system in America gets just as much traction as the mainstream events. Yeah, you get yeah, people yeah. that don't watch mainstream events and will just watch college. So um, playing football, I played football till I was like 16 and I started to do work, work on the weekends and like, that changes. And I'm like, I can't be the guy with no dough. So I, need to I, I was going to ask you about your civilian life, innit? but we'll mm, get to we'll, that. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah we'll go back to that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so I stopped playing football and what made you stop though? I need to work on the weekends. Oh. So it was that Sunday. I couldn't play Sunday football. I couldn't play Saturday. Football. Why? Why did you want to like? So you had to choose. There was a point you had to choose between football and and money. The way I look at it is this, yeah. Or when working. It, working. Or, when yeah. you're in school, and I'm not making out like it's, it's bad or a nightmare, but people the discrepancy starts to come when you get to like year ten. So you start to see everyone's going outside of school to go and get lunch. 
if you're someone whose family's getting benefits or you're on dinner mm. ticket, you can't really go out and go and get lunch right, because you've got to eat with everyone else. Mm. So, I'm yeah. to you. so then now you've got to try to work out a way that you can generate money. But then you're trying to generate money and then everyone's going out on the weekend and getting a trim every weekend. Mm. So now you've got to pattern it so that you've got money for your trim. You've got money to eat lunch. Man, them was going Chinese every day and getting Chinese buffet for five pounds. Yeah, I never used to understand I'm like, them that's kids, bro. Pound, that's a hundred pound a month. And I'm thinking, bro, hundred pound a month. Think about it, five days a week. Yeah, yeah five, five pound a day. Yeah. Then, then, then think, think about it. But I hate those kids, you know, bro. bro. I can't is, stand those kids. I'm like. sitting there. Were you one of those kids, blood? Like? You were I broke. Like, I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> bro, exactly. Pack lunch. Oh yeah, we were broke. Bro. Yeah, them ones so, like. So, it's uh, mad. so I remember I could blag it because I had a good personality. I was like, in the sense of. I was quite popular in my year. Yeah, yeah. I could say to man, look, I'm not coming out for lunch. We, we used to sneak out back in the day as well. And I'm not sneaking What out. school did you go to? Adi and Stanhope in New Cross. Adi? Adi and Stanhope. We used to call it Stanley and No Hope. It was big. <laughs> <laughs> you know kids are deep with them. They're, they're, deep. they're, they're <laughs> so deep, yeah. They make you question everything. Like they're GMVQ, questions. getting nowhere very quickly. Yeah, so I'm saying, like, like, why? Choose it. My mum's chose my school, innit? Like, <laughs> like, what are you saying? Like, it's not me. But I remember um, in that time, I'm trying to work out how to make money. Yeah. So I thought, look, I have to just make, I have to go and do work on the weekends. So I started working. Mm. And then um, while I was in college, I started to do tie boxing as well. I could do that in a week, like just a bit of tie boxing. So that was kind of. So who's kinda, paying for all this? You? Me, I had to try and pay for it myself. Wow, but EMA, cool. EMA. Oh, that's oh. the one. EMA. See, when you joined, when you joined in college, yeah. that was. 30 pounds used to flip in. It was like 600 pounds. Yeah, 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 I remember being in, though. in the common room. I remember being like, bro, you're in the common room. And I was like, bro, you got to listen. So I was like, yeah. well, I need to of get my course, EMA. Of <laughs> That's all I was in college for was EMA. I remember thinking But, but you're, you're in the class as a drone, though. You're not even there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, just, oh, I'm spending oh, I'm my EMA. Yeah. You're in, I'm yeah. spending my EMA. I'm like, bro, cool. <laughs> Like when it's the Wednesday, you're like, I've, 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 beat, I've peaked. Today. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've yeah. done yeah. what I've done. I've, I've <laughs> done the weekend. I'm like, cool. I'm going to go out. So this weekend... I'm gonna go and link so and so. I'm gonna get my five day pass. Yeah. It's like Mr. Oh, Lock. Oh, yeah. 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 I was getting five day pass. Like, I'm gonna do a bit. Five day pass? Yeah, five day I just clocked what you bro. said. Oh, How yeah. much was that? that? It was like five pounds. Five, 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 five hundred. Yeah, yeah, but then it went up. It was worth it. Yeah. We used to do a madness here. This is, I'm You're talking about yeah. travel card, right? No, no. What? No, the T Mobile, bro. Oh, I thought you were talking about. No, bro. So, man, get a five day pass. Man's ringing people. I just unlimited for five days. So, these times, bro, you have to pattern it. One to one. Right. No, that was yeah. before. On a Wednesday, it's Timo, isn't it, Sam? Yeah. Oh, Timo. So you do it on a Wednesday, that means you can use the phone on the weekend. Uh, yeah. So when you're linking whoever you need to link, you can actually use it for yeah, what it's worth. Yeah, yeah. If you go out on a Monday, it's stupid because by Friday, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, you're, you're in work, school. You do like flipping smoke signals to link yeah, your bridges. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'll meet you at this time. You meet, you'll see the smoke signal come from my house. You come over. Oh, wait, 100, mum, dad. Do you remember, that, you remember, remember that thing where you could go to like the, the room of the phone booth, yeah? Yeah, yeah? You type in a number oh, yeah. and then you give a little message. Oh, wait, 100, oh, mum, dad. Gosh, bro. Yeah. <laughs> we had that one, yeah? But we had a worse one. There's like a ghost town station in my area, yeah? So you've got Lucian, you've got New Cross, and there's a station called St. John's between. And I couldn't think of what the equivalent is in this area, but it's not a real station. Mm. So not every train goes there. Uh, it's in the, it's a residential yeah, area. No one, you, know, you don't see anyone, like Rectory Road Station, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 you don't see nobody there. <laughs> goes like, down. It's mad. So basically, we used to have the code for the emergency phone. So the emergency phone that the, that the train people use, yeah. there's a code you put in. So you right. open the box and you put a code in and you can ring everybody. So that phone is like live, yeah? It bro, can, it's not meant to be. It's meant to be for emergencies, but there's a code for it. And somehow everyone has a code. A code on the phone or a, a like code, code on the box? You've got to type in. you got to oh, type into the box. So right. you open the box and you type in the code on the actual phone. Okay, I and see. And it lets you ring out. So these times, this is before... You man's are bait, you know, bro. bro it's making phone calls on a... Train station, bro. train station, bro. Man, but there was no one there. Okay. Okay. You got to do, bro. So imagine these times, man's bringing all of the pieces of paper with every girl's number on it that we yeah. can find, yeah. and you're going to bring everybody on a Friday evening. <laughs> it don't matter if it's going to conflict to something else. Yeah, yeah, on Saturday. yeah. I've got the moment now where I can call everybody. <laughs> bro, there was a queue for this phone. No that way. It was ridiculous. And then the, when the train driver used to drive past, they'd honk the horn. Right, right, and they'd right. be like, you have to be like, oh, hold on. <laughs> yeah, 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 basically. It's fucking foolishness, like it was dumb, yeah? But these are all money-saving yeah, tips, yeah, yeah like yeah, to live yeah. life. Like, Peckham Cinema was two ninety nine. Like, you could, you could go out and do things. Yeah. But I remember thinking I have to make money, but I was still doing martial arts. I still could do some Thai boxing. And then I stopped, and then... Um, so Thai boxing, how long were you doing that for? Uh, about a year, about a year. On and off for a year. Um, so you had where did that come from, bro, man? With the drive to do martial arts. Yeah, bro. Because was it your parents? Was it you? Was um, it like an older? Or was it? I've like, got an older brother. And yeah. How, 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 how many years? He's four years older than me. Okay. Um, so never never old enough to be able to beat up, but 
right. old enough to be able to reason with You're getting licks yeah, from him, though. Mama, listen, yeah. come on. Even to this day, yeah, he's to me, bro, you think Jiu-Jitsu works for me, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I was shooting, and he's bro. He's big. My brother's big. He's a big boy. Yeah? Six five, black. And wow, he's massive. Yeah? yeah. So stuff. I brought him to jiu jitsu once. Yeah. And does he, he do any training? Him. No, he comes jiu jitsu once. He does. Yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll dabble in Thai boxing. He's got, he's got good striking, doesn't he? Um, and his son boxes, but he put a guy in a guillotine one time and took the guy's feet off the floor. But I, I had to stop the whole class. I'm teaching the class. I said, stop, 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 don't do that. He's like, no, no, no. Me and the brothers just like the same. He doesn't know his own strength. You're, that's literally you're hanging him. Like yeah, you're yeah. hanging him in front of my face yeah, yeah. and I can't do nothing. And like. you were teaching the class. Bro, I, I, listen, the way I had to, I said, stop, stop him. I said, stop him. Because <laughs> he's not going to listen to me. So stop him. Like, but um, that was kind of my influence in, in relation to martial arts. And then um, I, I did my degree and my degree, I kind of went back into football from teaching perspective, from coaching perspective. And then when I finished that, I was coaching... So what did you do your degree in again, sorry? Sports science and professional football coaching. Sports science? Yeah, football coaching. Um, so you do your coaching badges with your, with it, and, you, that, and well. you do like coaching modules as well. And uh, which which university was it? Greenwich University. Wh- what year did you go to uni, bruv? Don't say 2003, bruv. How old was that? Um, I was I went late as well, because I didn't, well, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't go like yeah, well, I when I was supposed to go. It must have been 2004, 2003. Bruv, don't tell me that, bruv. It must have been 2004. Now, which, which site, though? <laughs> I went... Um, at Medway, they had to, they had to, they had to oh, get a okay, coach okay, okay, okay. from Avery Hill. Right. And they used to whip it Avery Hill was the it was no man's land, bro. Oh, middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I went to Maritime. See, that one's all right. Computer that's science. That feels yeah. nice. When yeah, you're yeah, there, yeah, yeah. you feel like you're in great. I used to <laughs> deliver sandwiches to Avery Hill, bro. Oh, is I, it? Long story, bro. Avery but yeah. Was mad. No, Avery Hill was mad because we, the dorms are Avery Hill as well. Yeah. So everyone's there chilling, doing yeah, what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's that. weird, bro. But I literally went to university when... Um, my wife at the time fell pregnant. So I kind of, I missed that. Every, I, I went to university to get my stuff to leave. Yeah. My so wife was pregnant at the same time. Same time as well, yeah. yeah. So I had to... What, like, what, yeah, what, what, when was your first born? This is bad. 2006. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's mad, same, 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 same thing. thing. Yeah. Same thing. Exactly the same thing. So yeah. them type of times... That's why I had to leave university. I didn't finish. Oh, was it because of that? I didn't finish. You were hard body, man. You finished it. I had to ride it out. And like, it was crazy. Like, so then I got back into football, kind of. And I was coaching... um Lucian Islamic Centre. So I was doing that as part of my, with my degree, I had to do my coaching hours. I was like, I can coach the master team as well. And I just back up Muslim as well. So it was nice, nice yeah. to be around the brothers. Um, what was it, like 11 aside? 11 aside team. So there's a youth team and an adult team as well. Um, but it's good, it's, it's good, it's good. How long did you do that for? For three years. Two, okay, or, or like two and a half years. So I think I, I did it, I played the first year and coached. Second year, I didn't, third year. Yeah, two years, two years. But over a three year span. Um, and then towards the end, my ex-wife was saying to me, oh, like, you go, you're always going to go and coach football, you're going to do football. And I couldn't justify it because I was like, it's, the better I got at football mentally, it's the more lazy I got anyway. So I was, I what could do you play mean? football. Because if you don't understand how to play, you don't have to do as much running. Mm. So I couldn't say it's keeping me fit. I was coping. Like Perlo, isn't it? Perlo, like, Perlo. Oh, that's my last <laughs> story, bro. Yeah? Get the ball, feed out. Yeah. And I started playing Where did you play? I, what position? Yeah. yeah. Imagine this. Are you, when I was younger, I played on the winger and up front. And then I started to play up front and defensive midfield. And to me, they, I played them exactly the same. The same mm. way I played defensive midfield is exactly the same way I played centre forward. Mm. Same thing. Same. It's not about scoring, it's about holding the ball up, bringing yeah. people in, seeing the game. I played, it, I played mostly in my back to goal. I mean, it's only if I needed to go through, I'd go through or do whatever. But um, yeah, it was, it was decent. It was nice. But I had to stop because I realised it wasn't doing, I couldn't justify it. So I said, cool, I'm going to go back into judo. Sorry, I missed a bit out. I did judo at the same time I was doing Muay Thai. Yeah? Yeah. So I got back my first belt in judo. Nothing spectacular, but yeah. I understood. I liked, I enjoyed grappling. And then I said... Um, Where did you do judo? Sorry, I keep Elton, interrupting in a, you, in bro. A club, in a club in Elm. I couldn't remember what it was called. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Um, club, like, in, there's, a, there's a big club in Elm, isn't it? There's a big they, club they, now, They yeah. do competitions in there now. Right, yeah. yeah they even do jiu-jitsu enough. competitions in there, isn't in it? There, yeah, but yeah, there yeah, wasn't, yeah. There wasn't at the time, there wasn't. It was a smaller club. But yeah. same, same. I think it's the same route people. So I remember going and doing that there. And how old were you when you started judo? 18. 18, okay. 18 or 19. So um, I enjoyed it and I loved, I loved it. So when I stopped doing football, I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to go back into judo. But I'm, this time now I'm Muslim. Mm. So I said, look, I, I can't, I rang up like, the, the, the judo national whatever, whatever body. And I said, look, I, I can't bow. Yeah. Is it going to be a problem? The man started laughing. He said, of course it's going to be a problem. Of course it's going to be a problem. I said, bro, it's part of, the, it's part of judo. I said, is it? I said, of course it's not, part, it's not part of my thing, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be doing judo. <laughs> so at the time, and you'll probably be able to find this, yeah, if you look for when... When 
This is why we need to have our own places, bro. It's bro, it's mad. So when you look at I had the same problem in, in, in karate and stuff, bro. See. I couldn't get into the national team because yeah. of that, bro. For all this it's all that it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So um I remember going I think now they're way more more more, more relaxed. Yeah, 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 they're way more. But yeah. I remember going now and I typed in this was the same time that Fei Zhao, so Fei Zhao versus Mohamed Lawal in Strike Force. So I had a good friend of mine who used to wrestle. King Mo? No, no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah King yeah, Mo, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So King Mo fought, fought um, what year is that? What is it, Fei Zhao, like that? F. Oh, you butchered that one, bro. I think Zhao is with an X in it or something. No, his name, Fei Zhao, it's F E I J A O, I think it is. Something, something like that. Muhammad Lowell. He's Nigerian, right? Yeah. yeah. He's a beast wrestler, bro. Well, that's it. Whatever year that fight was. No, that's not him. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. Him, that's oh, it's not right. him, yeah? Yeah, yeah that is him. So the, the year of this fight, I remember. What year was that? Saturday 8th, uh, 2010. <laughs> what, what month? Uh, 8th, August. August, right? So, all right. So basically. In August, this is a, it's actually on point. In 2010, I, because I wasn't going to do judo, I yeah. said I'm going to go wrestling. So I'm yeah. looking at where I can go wrestling. We have a team called Team USB. Right. right. Yeah, so I went to Team USB and I did the warm up. I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> no word of a lie, yeah? I'm on a level, yeah? I remember doing it and my ego took me through it. Yeah? And I'm sure it was, I'm sure it was coaching me. I'm confident. It was him, yeah. He was getting man to be on our knees and jump from our knees onto our feet 20 yeah, times. I told him, I told him about that, bro. My knees was doing a, yeah, yeah, a yeah, madness, bro. Yeah. Your knees were going like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> bro, screaming for help, yeah? Then I'm seeing man jumping over man's head. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing like, you know them frog things that you do? You put your hand on, 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 yeah, on the, the post lead, in the street, the leaf yeah, yeah, Over yeah. man's head. Yeah, get out of here, bro. Then man's shooting between people's legs. I'm like, bro, do you want to stand up? Do you want to go that? What is it you want to do? I think, to be honest with you, I told him about this because when I first was going to start I was about 16. Yeah, mm. and I went to one of his classes and he did a thousand squats. I said, Get out of never here! Do this, never do this in my life. I thought this is a joke. I thought, Whoever wrestled, why? Why would you? I thought, well, I'm dying. Yeah, I'm dying. And then I don't know if the time I went, his dad was there as well. Yeah, so you're seeing this old man doing stuff, yeah, you, and you're yeah, thinking, yeah. No, 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 this is embarrassing, bro. I can't do none of this. And I don't break his dad was his levels, bro. yeah, yeah, levels, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But at the time, you equate when you first got to this type of tomorrow, it's like. If I'm fitter than you, I should be able to yeah, do more. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I couldn't understand. I'm like, this don't make no sense. It's a different bro. type of fitness. Yeah, it's isn't it? of fit. I'm yeah. like, this don't make no sense. So I came and it was taxing, and then I started training at a place called Lucian Wrestling Club, which is a small wrestling club because it was closer to me. So I was wrestling there at the time, and the brother that I know is it uh, Leon? Leon Rattigan? No, this was done by a guy, there's a guy called Gaga, Georgian guy, wicked muscle. Okay, right. So we we're wrestling with him, and I was wrestling for a while. And then a friend of mine was doing jujitsu, and he said to me, Jujitsu is better than wrestling. I said, Shut up. <laughs> I said, The warm up in wrestling is mad. I, one of them one time. Like, I was gassed. I was like, No, yeah. the wrestling's going to work. And Fajal fought King Mo and knocked him out. And he said to me, Look, Jujitsu versus wrestling. Yeah, but he knocked, knocked him out. But um, that kind of turned my head. And then in, I think it was April 2011, I went to. We're Leeds gym in Carlson Gracie. Old school. Old gym. Like like yeah. Bro, Bro you see that gym there? Mad. The goons that was in that yeah. gym. Bass. I heard madness in that gym Bro, that goes on, bruv. A bass, Hamza. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It was mad. And I was heavy, like Hamza's weight. So they would put me to go. Who's with Hamza? Hamza. Um, Hamza Sanford, uh, Black Bar, a tall. Um, does he, is he still tra- Does he still train? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, but he's, okay. bruv, he's mustard. Yeah. I'll send you a clip of him subbing somewhere with a standing loop choke. Horrible, bruv. Horrible. And I'm in the background of the video going, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he, I remember going there thinking, this is actually mad. And that's why I met the Badshaw brothers. I met everyone, like everyone from Jiu-Jitsu there, but I couldn't stay. So, after that, because it was, I was safe for a month, and it was nice to be around the brothers, but it was too far. It was, again, taxing, because yeah. my missus at the time had just given, it was a, it was a lot. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a lot going one. on. So, we had, I think we had two, two kids at this time. So, now, um, so all this time you're you're, you're at uni or yeah, yeah I'm, t- I'm trying thing. to juggle everything at yeah, the same yeah. time. So, so I remember thinking, how am I going to go? So there was a place close to me called Pyramid Martial Arts in Woolwich, 
and they did everything. I know Pyramid. Do you know what I'm saying? They, yeah. They've done, they done a, a refurb recently, innit? Right. On some next. The refurb is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and if they're watching this, they need to get me to teach you jujitsu then. Right, at them, clip in at them, bro. 100%. So basically, um, oh, so even in that picture, yeah, there's two young brothers in that picture. There's Issa and Josh. These two? No, 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 in the last one we had. Oh, the one before that? So Issa trains at Fight Zone now, and Josh trains with me, yeah? And um, Issa boxes now as well, I'm sure, yeah, that you can see his um, highlights online. Yeah, Issa Montreux, yeah? Mustard, I'm sure, I'm mustard. Oh, Moroccan boy. He's um, half no, Moroccan, no, I think. No, no, he's Macaulay. He got his green one the other day, yeah? So he's like, oh, no, yeah. he trains at Fight Zone, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bengali kid. Mustard, bro. Is he? Bro, he used to come training, and it was only them two. They were the only two kids in the class, and they just have to do arm bars for the whole day. When he went fight zone, they told him in combat he's not allowed to do armors because he kept clapping on people. Mm. He's he's I'm right, he's on point, yeah. But um, I saw him in a comp actually. He's bad, isn't he? Yeah, he's I saw like him in a comp once. The front he likes yeah, the yeah, he yeah, likes yeah. the bolos and, and yeah, all that madness. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. By the way, by the way, if you're a kid and watching this, yeah, there was no kids classes back in the day. You're training with saying? adults, bro. You There's no jumping over belts and doing this madness, yeah? yeah, yeah. yeah. You train with adults, bro, and watching man's getting yeah, choked right. the life out of them, bro. It. it was crazy. And it's mad because when we went there, there was only MMA class, and it was with um, Pete Irving. Okay. So I said, oh, Pete, please, man, can we do jiu-jitsu? Because he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu as well. He said, all right, cool. Look, this was in Pyramid, yeah? Yeah, so we started doing jiu-jitsu like once a week. And then um, we did it for like a year. And then that's when I fought my first tournament and enjoyed it. And then he left and had to go to Newcastle. So he left the gym to his friend, Austin Gardner, who was my second coach. And they're yeah. both uh, jiu-jitsu guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Austin um, trained at Carlson's when he first started. So he's like Willie's generation. Right. And Pete, Pete's coach is a Carlson great team. So the Carlson style has always been consistent. Yeah. But Austin left. And then, um, and then when, if you go back, to, go back to the last picture. The last one, not the last one. He was on. Top left. See the left? Me and my son, my boy. Is that you, yeah? Yeah, bro. That's you? Yeah, yeah. and there's my coach there. Two, there's the, the, the other black guy in the top row. That's my coach. This guy here? Yep, and the Asian boy in front of the blonde girl. That's Issa's brother. Yeah. Um, the Issa, the Issa monster, the one in the show. Oh, okay, right. And right. the two guys that are in front of you, the twins, there's two twins. Yeah? These two? Yeah. The one on the right-hand side, he just fought on Soul Takers today and um, to a draw. What's his name? Today. His name's Asha. Um, Asha Mercegeli. Um, so yeah, people, yeah, people. How long ago was this, man? Um, this was 2011 or 2010. Wow, way back. No, sorry, 2011 or 12. It was, yeah. So now she will be vexed at this. Like she's my student and my teammate, um, Jackie Appel. She's I don't remember if she took a shahada recent, not recently. This thing, yeah. Years. No, no, black black sister there. This one, yeah. Um, British champ every single belt. Oh, one second. Does she um? Right. Does she, she do refereeing as well, bro? Yes. Oh, uh, she she refereed my son's match. Uh, um, uh, uh, what's it called? She she was wearing a scarf at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she was in there. Mashallah. Yeah, so man. now, bro, like her, different level, different level, bro. We, we What's she forward, doing bro. now? So teach, she teaches teaches okay. me as well. Oh, wicked. So, um, same team as me. So we fought, we've, same team. So um, where does she teach, bro? She teaches in. She's gonna start teaching in Peckham soon. She's from South London. Yeah, from South London as well. Yeah, but again, it's just if. There's a need for her yeah. to let people know, and we'll just we try, need, try yeah, and we because, because but you know what it is, yeah, like women need this man, hundred percent, like bad, hundred, and women buy women, bro. There's a lot of like, let's just say, like in jujitsu gyms, women feel uncomfortable a lot of the time, bro. Yeah, not yeah. not all gyms, not all gyms, yeah. but it's very difficult for a woman who's never trained mm. to kind of like. You know, go into a gym which is mixed, yeah, 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 and try and like you know, some women don't have that inhibition, but a lot. Well, yeah. That would stop them in it. So they will, yeah. They will, they will what, what 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 last time I uh, I remember when she was she was, a, she was a purple belt. Yeah, she's still a purple belt now. Um, she should be getting her brown belt soon. Inshallah, inshallah. Um, but she's mustard like win, wins everything. But um, so when I uh, we did jujitsu with Austin, we did a lot of work with Austin for like. So I was with Austin until I got my blue belt from Austin. Because Pete left just before I got my blue, my blue belt from Austin and my purple belt from Austin. And then I had a stint where I was training in um, a club called Eon in Streatham. Yeah. Another Carlson Gracie um, lineage student as well. Um, so again, again. Is he things. Brazilian? No, nah, he's, um, he's Amy Madden's British. Oh, okay, um, right. He's good. He, he's good. He gave me my brown belt. And then when I got my brown belt, I just spoke to Pete and I said, look, Pete, you're my original coach. That's who I came to and who I learned the most from. My mentality, my, my teaching methodology, 
all from him, my style. I said, look, I just want to represent you in London. So I just started representing him myself. Okay. So where I teach, I just represent my coach. I go and see him every now and again, and I just train. In Newcastle. Yeah, 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 and I just train. Why did Bob Newcastle, bro? That's where he's from. Oh, is he from there? Because no one goes Newcastle. He used to come down to teach. He used to get on the train. That's mad, bro. And come down to teach. So when I was a purple rock, and I'm missing a very, very key bit. So between Eamon and Austin, it's mad. Between Eamon and Austin. I did about a year with Leo Nagal. This is a very, very important year in my jiu-jitsu. Probably the most, probably the most telling where my jiu-jitsu changed. Leo's old school, and Leo's been like one of the highest ranked in the country. Leo actually awarded my coach his black belt. Right. I want to say of, in line with his other coach in Brazil, which is Crisio. But Leo's a different level, man. Like if you, if I picked any martial, like if you said to me right now, get the best wrestler in Legion. And I want someone to fight them in a wrestling match, I get Leo. If you, if you took me to karate gym and said, get me a karate fight, and I want to fight someone in karate, I'll get Leo. And he's my first pick. Why'd you say that? Bro, he's not understands how to fight. It's unbe- the way he understands how to fight is unbelievable. I've never met someone who understands how to fight like that. Yeah? He's is that diff- him? Yeah, different level. Bro, he's got, if, he, if you just cover his face, you think it's Hector Lombard, bro. Bro, that's it. That's it bro. bro, I'll give you something. When you train with Mashallah, him, yeah, he's bodied up, bro. He's the hardest working person in the gym. If you go and train with him today, Hard working person in the gym. What, what's his background? Is he Brazilian? Brazilian, yeah, yeah, yeah. From where? Like? From, um, I'm not even sure which part of Brazil he's from, but I'll give you an example, yeah? So, his black belt, he went, was at Carson's for Hart for the first half of his career, um, and then he went and started training with Alliance, yeah? So, Alliance Jiu Jitsu is um, one of the biggest Jiu Jitsu clubs in the That's um, Marcelo Garcia's Alliance, right? Right, yeah? Uh, yeah, right. yeah, he is, yeah. So, if you type in, I don't know if you'll be able to find it, yeah? Type in, um, Fabio Gajel, blog, yeah, black belt list. You're going to have to spell that for him, bro. Gajel, G-U-R, G-E-L. Zach's sweating, bro. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that his name, yeah? Yeah, blog. Yeah, and put in black belt list. Where's it come up? No, it's not even there. I can't, I'll, I'll send it to you. But he's the fourth person, yeah, that he awarded a black belt to. Who, your, your coach? Uh, uh, Leo Nagao, yeah? Oh, this guy. So Leo yeah. is the fourth person because you awarded his black belt to. In the list around him is, that's I think number six is Marcelo Garcia. Yeah. Yeah? And I think number eight or something, number five is Tellez, Marcelo Garcia. The list of, of black belts, see, see the black belts there? Uh, Damien Maia as well. Yeah. So, But he got his Leo black belt. He, he got, right, Damien Maia's on a podcast talking about Leo Nagao. Because no. um, Leo... Leo um, Vieira, who's check my boss, there was little Leo or Leo Zinho, which is him, yeah, and Leo Nagao, which is big black Leo Nagao, big black, yeah. So they were referred <laughs> to as the gym. That like, is the most literal, it, uh... it's so literal, but it, 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 it's not it's not offensive yeah. at all. It's literally, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's been strapping, like, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the man. yeah. But so he gave he gave Fabio Gajo his nickname, the general, right? So Leo's old school, like that. Leo's before there's 115 or 16 or 100, about 120 now black belts that Gajo has given out himself, yeah. Leo was number four. Yeah, so he's he's monstrous. Like, but go in there. He, t- he just re- he just reminded me how to fight. And my coach Pete spent a lot of time with him when they taught at Urban Kings together. Um, so he actually physically again handed Austin his black belt and handed Pete his black belt. So he's handed them his. Belt. Uh, Claudio Silva, he he handed him his black belt on on the request of I think it's Ricardo Vieira. Yeah, but he's old school like that. He's, there's not many people that outrank him in the country, mm. but he's just such a fire. His mentality is fire. The fire. There's a there's a clip of him. On YouTube, and he says, um, they said to him something about how does he feel about jujitsu? He goes, he goes jiu-jitsu. No, what do you think of the sport of jujitsu? He goes, sport. He goes, this is not a sport. He goes, this is life. Yeah, yeah. And he's being genuine. That's what he's like. Yeah. But he is such a weird thing. Like you go there and you get gems from him, and he just reminds you what the art is for and how to fight. And that was a very, very important part of my jujitsu because it kind of turned me back on to switched on to the focus. Where were you off though? What was what what where, where was your brain at? The purple belt's a long belt. So mm. when you get your purple belt, there's people that started jujitsu. I started jiu- right. Hamza was a purple belt when I started jujitsu, and when I got purple belt, he was still a purple belt. So it's a long belt. Mm. It makes you start to question like, am I doing this? Am I doing it? Or is am I doing it? Am I taking part? Am I progressing? And also, we, we, we mean long. You mean like you um, spent a long. I spent four years at purple belt. Mm. I spent two years. I spent a year at white belt. Two years at blue. Or is it purple box? Is that how long it normally takes to get purple? Yeah, purple box is the, lo- the longest because because brown is quite short, right? It's like a two year belt. Why like is that? Two years. Why is that? Um, purple box where you formulate your your game. So what it is is 
when you're a white belt, there's, there's, there's only a few moves that you can't do. There's, there's two moves, for example, that you can't do, but you can do them at blue belt. Blue and purple belt share all the same moves. You can do all the same moves illegal. So you can wrist lock, you can do like you can do the same things. At brown belt, they they now incorporate toe holds and knee bars. So brown belt is there for you to exercise, see if you can play your game with those new moves. But at purple belt, you start to formulate your strategy, how you mm. play your game. You start to build your jiu-jitsu. Your jiu-jitsu becomes embodied. It becomes personalized. It stops being a set of moves. It becomes what you do. So at purple belt, you start to... What do you mean? So you learn how to armbar. You learn how to play close guard. You learn to play open guard. You learn all these things at white and blue belt. But are you going to play open guard? Oh, I see what you're saying. Are you going to play... How are you, like, how are your you own language? Play? How do you adapt it to right. what you like so doing? Okay. purple belt is where you start to grow your jiu-jitsu. Oh, I see. And that's why there's... Even... Um, I went to Abu Dhabi before... Again, we're here think. or in Abu Dhabi. In Abu Dhabi, I went okay. to the, the, the actual Abu Dhabi. Again, I was fortunate enough to go because this is what I'm trying to teach you about the levels and the quality. Yeah, and people don't even rate. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say this and 100 percent keep this in. Yeah, Jackie Appel, yeah, who is the female coach, yeah, for TSL, I to have a jiu-jitsu in London. Yeah, is unbelievable at jiu-jitsu. She won. She won the Abu Dhabi to trials to go to Abu Dhabi. Yeah? So they paid for the whole journey. For it, and I went to go and coach her when she was there. So, um, I had that, that whole experience when we got to Abu Dhabi was literally off the back of her winning. Right. She to win. So you were there, like, um, so, when you say coach her, So I was a coach. I was a, I was a, I was a corner. Yeah, so it's me. Right, I got you. What, what would that co- consist of, like? So, Getting her ready, making sure she's warmed up correctly. Right, okay. okay. Being in the back. So I, was, yeah. I had access access to the back and be, sitting with all the black belts at the back and all the other belts at the back. Oh, that's crazy, man. Everything. And it was crazy. It was a, it's a massive experience. But going out to Abu Dhabi, again, kind of taught me about jiu-jitsu again on a higher level because it's like you're sitting there with likes of... It's like going to sit and p- train with David Beckham. So you're mm. going to play on the pitch and he's going to play straight after you. And you're sitting in the back with them... And you're learning from them. So the first year I didn't compete, and the second year I went and competed as well. I went because I went there twice. Yeah, I went and competed, and um, it was just mind blowing. It just, it just, it just, it just the whole thing taught me a lot about about what's going on in jiu-jitsu and how it works. And I remember going out there thinking to myself, "How is it? And how how am I going to live this life of jiu-jitsu?" And um, when Jackie went out there and went and spoke to Gabby Garcia, and Gabby Garcia was the best bar none female competitor. She's, on paper, she still is. She might be dropping off a little bit now, but she was by far, she used to smash people. And Gabby was a black belt and she was outside watching the purple belts compete. And Jackie said to her, why are you here when you could be in the back? Warming up, she goes, no, no. She goes, this is where my next threat comes from. The brown belts are my generation. I saw them. Mm. I've just beat them to a belt. The purple belts is a whole other generation. They're a whole new breed. They're four years behind you. And they're four years behind you in hungry. Mm. Yeah? So, it just it's a whole different breed when you get to purple belt. So that's where you kind of learn your jiu-jitsu. It's where you should be striking fear into the black belts as a purple belt. They should be thinking, "Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to roll with that purple belt. He's a bit, he's a bit mm-hmm. mustard." Do you know what I mean? So that was a big learning process. Like, and I remember she said it to me, and I was like, "What?" I said, "No." So Gabby said, and she, and she, I she was pondering it. She was like this, and it started to make sense to me. So at the time when we went out there, um. There's a, there's a, the, probably the, in my opinion, the best female black belt now is um, Tan. Yeah? Mm. Tan was a purple belt then. Who? Tan P- P- Porfilio, I think her name is. Okay. Yeah? Gabby was talking about her. So we were, wa- imagine we're watching and Gabby was watching her at a purple belt and being like, raw, this woman's sick. And we're thinking, but she's nowhere near you. She's a purple, you're a black belt. You've got five time world champion. Why are you watching her? Lo and behold, Alhamma Brack, look who's, look who's, look who's, who's on smoke now. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So you kind of learn, man. You kind of Muhammad Ali was a purple belt when I went out there, yeah. And um, Nicholas, yeah, I remember. I remember actually watching that specific one. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when, because he was the standout star there, Muhammad Ali. I remember that. That was what was it? Two thousand what? It was Twelve, great. thirteen, right? Yeah, yep. yeah. So that's when I first started, like, you no, know, jujitsu was starting to kind of like I started to kind of pay attention to it yeah. before I wasn't even on the radar. Yeah. And then, yeah, I remember watching the ADC. And, that, you know, um, the guy who used to make videos, bro, what's his name? Street Cooper. Cooper. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that first, that, that was that, that was that uh, ADCC, I think. I think it was that one. Mm-hmm. Then he started doing all these, uh, and that's what got me onto Jiu-Jitsu because I saw the back end of it and I saw, like, which is amazing, man. Um, crazy, man. So, 
Which leads me nicely. Mm. Uh, you kind of covered this a little bit, to be honest with you, like your influences. Mm. But I want to broaden it out to martial arts influences because you were seven years old when you started Shotokan, yeah? Yeah. And like you're saying, wh- like, who were your influences around that time and how did it change? Right. And who are your influences now? I grew up on action movies. Yeah. So you had um, Bruce Lee, you had Jackie Chan, you had um, even Arnie, just as an athlete, as yeah. someone who's who's peaked in their field and they looked the part. Yeah. You had, shame, shamefully, Steven Seagal. You had people, we grew up on these people that were, that it was handy. Mm. And then you grew up on films like Karate Kid, which kind of bridged the gap between, there's that big adult there who's six yeah. foot five, and there's this little kid in between that's the same size as me, and he's walking around on his tiptoes, kicking the, the living day outside people. I'm like, all right, cool. So I remember having those influences and thinking, oh, these people are really good. But then on a bigger scale, we grew up on boxing. Boxing was televised. We grew up on Mike Tyson. Yeah. And Mike Tyson, to me, it blew my mind. So watching Mike Tyson, it's so mad, yeah? Watching Mike Tyson box, I, the boxing's weird because... Because we caught Mike Tyson when, like... I guess more and more. My dad used to watch it. So you're looking at nineties Mike Tyson, isn't it? Right. So not not eighties Tyson, not which was like a monster on so another level. Right. So we yeah. had the reference of the eighties yeah. just coming. Yeah, yeah. So we, we hear about it. We hear about it, and then yeah. he went jail and came out. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we post jail Tyson. Post jail. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We had a bit more post jail. Yeah. I remember having a few pre 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 pre, pre ones, and also I had Nigel Ben. Do you remember your first Mike Tyson fight? Like first. I saw him fight. Um, yeah, as in like, or just paying paid attention to it. Like um, when he fought Holyfield, I remember the whole yeah. build up to that. I yeah, remember yeah. the build up before he went. Yeah, when he came out, when Holyfield had the high top first. You remember Holyfield uh, had a little high top, and then he cut his yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I remember that, and um, but I remember waking up and staying up. I remember watching Prince Nassim. Yeah, he was another one. Yeah. And I remember watching. Um, I'll tell you something about Prince Nassim in a minute. Yeah, I met Nigel Ben as well, man. Bless him, right? Um, immensely, yeah, because I think people miss something out with Prince Nassim. And I think people that were born or raised Muslim, they'll miss it. Mm. And for people that wasn't raised Muslim, there's stuff he did that was phenomenal. And I pray Allah rewards him immensely for it. I, mean, I don't even think he realizes what he did. Yeah, yeah. And again, it was relatable, yeah? So I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll go into this. He came in the ring, yeah? Emulating Hajj, yeah? He got in and got, I think it was Michael, it's Michael Buffett that's boxing, isn't it? Michael Buffett, yeah, yeah. yeah to say, um, Nassim wants to say something to honour his heritage and his father. Man said the Shahada in the ring. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. At these times, I wasn't even paying attention oh, to him. Oh, Mike Tyson. No, 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 uh, no, no Nassim, yeah? Oh, Nassim. So Nassim was doing this, and I'm thinking, hold on. When I look back, I'm like, he actually went to America and did it. And there's a documentary when he fought Barrera, yeah? And he lost that match. And in that match where he lost that match, I don't know how many other people it affected. And I would feel comfortable to stand before Allah and say that 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 watching the documentary helped my Iman and my Dean. Were you, were you Muslim? Or no, even if it was before I was Muslim, because right. I can't remember exactly if I watched the documentary after. But him and his brother in the in the casino, and his brother says, "Imagine how mad this is. We're in a casino and we're Muslim." These times, man's looking at his fade, his gal, <laughs> yeah. his, hype, his trainers. I'm thinking, you didn't think Dean when you look at him. Yeah, yeah. Again, a misconception. Were they gambling? No, they, he was saying, because they were in the hotel. So oh, you know, obviously they had to right. stay in the hotel because yeah, that's where the fight Of course, happened. of course. But yeah. he was, so, they were embarrassed to be in the hotel. Oh, I see. So we, that's what I'm trying to say. We're not even talking about gambling. They were embarrassed to be walking through and being like, we're here when people are gambling. So for all the things you think these people do wrong, or oh, he's shaved his beard off, or he's done this, yeah, this, that, yeah, and that, yeah. one, we're not looking at the other things that are there that are, are, are real, real, really based on the man. And then when he lost the fight, yeah? So he prayed before the fight. And when he lost the fight, he said, ah, oh, I'll give it to him. And he goes, no, 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 take it back. It's from Allah. So Allah made him win the fight. Yeah. Mm. Now this is from the cockiest man yeah. Yeah. that you can see with your mm. own eyes. So you think he doesn't? He doesn't get his props, bro. He don't get his props at all. At so he's at all, all man. Like at people all. forget about at Prince Nassim, bro. Sorry, at all. He don't get his props at all. I don't know what I'm eating. No, no, here, bro. But um, he don't get his props at all, and it's sad because, again, like I said to you. I just pray Allah gives him his props. Inshallah. Because Allah's not going to miss a trick. Yeah. And I, I'll be honest with you, I'm saying this on camera. Mm. Bro, the way he influenced, yeah, if I look back, I'm like, wow, that was some where I saw about Islam. Mm. Does that make sense? You know, yeah. for me as well, yeah. So you look at Princess in what, 90s, right? 
as an Arab guy, mm. yeah, he wasn't a terrorist on TV or shooting up innocent people, yeah, or Chuck Norris kicking him in the face. Yeah. You just see what I'm saying? He was a positive Arab role model, bro. And for me as a kid, seeing, loving those action films that you're talking about, yeah, yeah. And, and watching it, and then feeling bad about it, bro. Do you understand? Like, because you, li you, you, you like it, but then there's an Arab guy with a turban, and he yeah, gets like, yeah, shot yeah, up, bro. Yeah, do you see what I'm saying? Man, so, so it's like, you see those films, so you, you, and then you feel bad about it, bro. And then Sorry. your dad's like, huh? No, 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 no. just reminds me of the key eye. <laughs> 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 do you see what I'm saying? So, so yeah. for, 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 for even like, like, like the way he, the cock, because mm. in Arab culture, you don't do that. You kind of understated, did not it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, so, about, so my dad was a bit like, "What? Look at this guy. Why is he like?" Do you see what I'm saying? But deep down, he's like, "Oh yeah, it's." Uh, that's what I'm saying. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's this kind of. Um, it was wonderful, but that's what I mean. Like, so in boxing, I had them, but there was another boxer, yeah, and I'd ha when he boxed, I couldn't stand him. I had so many reasons why not to like him, and now there's two or three reasons why I rate him so much. Yeah, Chris Eubank. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, bro. Bro, it's so many fighter, things. Bro. Bro, beyond that, yeah, as a black man, and for all the things of our, what stereotypically black is, yes, 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 that was what I, kind of what my head was at when I was younger. But as I grew up and I started to watch him and listen to him and listen to his background and where he came from, and what he did was. Do you know what? I don't know much about Eubanks' background, but where bro, is he from? Um, Is he from London, bro? He's yeah, a London guy. Yeah. Bro, he used to be a thief. Like, he used to go to central London and rob like that. Yeah, and make money. He's, he's a. Bro, <laughs> no. bro, say, say, say what you're gonna say. Say, say, I'm gonna say, coconut, bro. Right, let me just point. He's not thing, though. He's no, not right, though. Right. That's yeah, the first not. thing I thought in my head. He's bro, not though. He's not. Eyes, bro. So once he stopped boxing, <laughs> yeah, I missed him. Now, why do I miss this brother? Yeah, yeah. Man, it's about you know. Why is Now you know what? You know what? Growing up, that's what I used to be in my head. Like, bro. Then I realized what he was doing. What he was saying was. There's no such thing as class. I pick my class. Yeah, yeah. Not my race. I pick my class. Mm. Yeah. I'm, he's black. There's no doubt in that. He's yeah. not hiding it. He's not trying to make himself lighter or anything else. He picks his class. Yeah. And he said, you can't tell him that he's the underclass or this. Yeah, he picks his class. 100%. And he's going he's gonna to live to that and be that. And I remember thinking to myself, his, his, his level of quality. I, there's, a, there's an interview, yeah, where he's going to fight Nigel Ben, yeah? And Nigel Ben. Again, he's a working he, class hero, bro. Right. But yeah, he fulfills like, the criteria. Okay, yeah. cool. The black aggressive guy, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. the dark destroyer. Like, it, there's a lot he fulfills, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. And there'd be an interview, Jay, and Nudge was like, oh, I hate him, man. I'm going to kick him. I hate, I hate this man. I hate him. And he's sitting behind Eubank. And Eubank's talking, and Ben starts to talk. And he goes, Listen, let's have some parliamentary procedure here. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> you see when he said that? Oh my gosh. I said, This man is the baddest man ever. Listen. You can't tell and say And even after this fight, he said, right, he said he hits like a tank. He's the hardest brother that's hit me. <laughs> but he was so classy in his persona, people don't understand it and don't understand what that means. Because But you know, you know, you know, you know something I have got But he puts me to sleep, not gonna lie. No, you know, you know what it is, bro. You know boxing wise. No, 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 the way he speaks so yeah. elegantly yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, you know what I mean? But for me, for me, this is what I have a problem with. Mm -hmm. Not with you, Bank. Yeah. But when we associate, I give you an example, bro. Yeah, and we all do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we associate something good mm -hmm. with white people and something bad with what we do, do you understand what right. I'm saying? To I give you an example. Yeah. Yo, this is black people always late. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or we, uh, was it Pakistani timing? Or yeah. do you understand Muslim yeah. timing? Or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, white people are always on time. I've pl met plenty of white people that were late, bro. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But our colonial minds, we've been, we've been brainwashed, bro. Yeah. Does that make sense? But I see what, what sorry, what precedes that. Yeah. yeah. This is what we've got to check. There are some things that because they've been adopted by uh, uh, the white higher classes, we've accepted it. Yeah. What about, he speaks English. Yeah. Yeah. And we live in England. Yeah. And him speaking the Queen's English. Yeah. Is seen as something that he can't have ownership of. No, right? no, I, I don't have nothing. I, I don't. Yeah, yeah hundred percent, hundred percent. That's when you grow up and be like, older than me. Is he trying to act like them? Mm, yeah, or is yeah. He just being himself. And my yeah. thing, that's why I said class because it took yeah. me years. When I say yeah. years, believe me, I when he used to box, I used to hate <laughs> the brother. I said, get this brother off my screen. He's gonna finish boxing. Kevin, I love you. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, man. Like, here we go again. 
Yeah, and I'm like, Rob, no, none of my family, no one don't talk like that in my family. No one, like, like, but I, I don't, you know, what? I don't have the problem with him talking like that. Yeah, do you understand? Mm -hmm. But like, it's everything that goes with it. Yeah, do you see what I'm saying? Package, like, like, like the suit, mm. the cane. Yeah. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like the the, the lifestyle. So, so for, for me, you can still talk normally. But then on the flip side, then so so I say normally, bro. Like here's my point. Yeah, well, go on. On the flip side, then if he wore baggy trousers and a hoodie, yeah. so we say we have. Nah, to that's not even that, that, bro. It's not even that, bro. Go on. What is it? But it's, it's a like class. Try, he's trying too hard. I'm no, not saying, but you're no, going but the other. No, no, you're no, going no, no, over no, here, bro. What I'm saying to you, he's trying to dress like a class. Yeah, race. There's a yeah, difference. Yeah, you see my point? Because if you, well, the problem is, is that we don't see that race in that class. Yeah, so that's oh, the problem. Yeah, yeah, you see yeah. my point? If we have a class and the people of that class dress a certain way, and we don't see the race, the representation in that class, we also must associate it with a race. He said, forget that. That's how I dress. So if he can yeah. dress like that, any black you can dress yeah. like that. Dress like that. Yeah. You look at um, pimps dress like that. Yeah. In theory, yeah. what you just described. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pimp. Is but do, do you know what it is? I think. <laughs> I think. I think. I think. Make it purple. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's true. That's true. You know. But but for me, like for, I, I've got no problem with Chris Eubank. Even when he was fighting, again, like I, I didn't really enjoy his style. Do you mm -hmm. get me? Like I wouldn't, because I like the heavyweight. You know, like you're, you're young. You're Who's not you're not Tyson? you're not a connoisseur, bro. Do you see what I'm saying? You know those guys that oh look at that, bro. I can't I couldn't even tell you, bro. I just want to see people get like put to sleep, bro. You can like, pull it out, though, bro. Yeah. But I just I just for me it's I don't know, bro. That's a like, bag as well, brother. <laughs> Bro, he used to drive a truck, bro. Remember that, the, 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 uh, over the top. Remember yeah. so versus long over the top. But it was the, the, um, that truck thing. That so on another thing, mm. it's just before I forget, yeah. And this is, I'm, I'm acting that. Do you know what? To be fair, man's got to think big. Yeah. yeah? Cause you actually watched this yeah. last year. There's a bit. He boxed um, Michael Watson. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, as a result of the boxing match, Michael Watson was paralyzed. Yeah. And there's a few things. There's, in the documentary, there's something just to random me to touch on. Was this recent, the documentary? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been meaning to watch that, actually, man. There's he was crying, innit? It? Bro, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Bro, Watson, yeah, right. This, see this right here? This this um, this um thing with Piers Morgan? Watch that and you'll see, you'll realise why I like Chris Eubank. It will make perfect sense to you, yeah? But when he fought Watson, yeah? Watson knocked, Watson knocked him down before the bell rang. So he knocks him. He stands up and he gets the count after the bell. Right. Yeah. And Eubank makes the count. He goes back to his corner. And they asked Watson, what were you thinking? He said, I was thinking when I'm walking back to my corner, my life is going to change. I'm about to be the champion of the world. And his life changed, but not the way he thought it was yeah, going to change. Yeah, yeah. And if that's not humbling, yeah, humbling. And when I say this, I'm not saying this as in he there's anything he deserved. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best what he deserves. Yeah. It's not, it's not much about deserving. The lesson I take from that is that I learned something from that. So his, whatever happened to him was something to teach me something. But um, years ago, I had to go to the Shard to do a performance for something just before I was Muslim. So about 2010. And we went to the Shard and they invited lots of people there and they invited Chris Eubank. So we're there and he's talking to us. And one of my friends is a boxer, so he's chatting to me about boxing. And Chris Eubank was talking to us and Michael Watson came in behind him, about 10 metres behind him. And he's stumbling in, like, he's struggling. When I say stumbling, you know what I mean? Like, he's, 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 he's not, he's, he's trying not to be graceful. Yeah, 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 he's yeah, trying yeah. to walk. And Eubank said, hold on you, man. Stop talking to us. Went over there and gave him a king's welcome. I've never, ever, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And in this, Michael Watson's in the crowd in, when he's in this scenario. Yeah. And he's talking about it. That's when he starts crying. Oh, Watson. so Michael Watson's actually he's in this. there, bruv. I've seen the two of them together with my own eyes. Wow. And when I saw it, it was mind-blowing. And that's what I said. His character... He's not, he's not. He's he's a different man. And he's Watson doesn't even hate him for that as well, bro. Yeah, Watson, bro. Watson. The reason he's crying is because Watson blesses him. Watson basically says, "Bro, it's all right." He said, "Our chapters are intertwined. Like when when you talk about us, you're gonna mention one and the other." That's it's like um, Last Samurai, bro. You know the. Um, have you seen Last Samurai? No, no, no. no. Have you ever seen Last Samurai? Oh. Nah, man. You're, nah, nah. Yeah. It's not a real visual because I'm the Last Samurai. Luke. So. <laughs> 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 Alana's best. <laughs> Luke. So basically, you're telling me what to watch when I go home, yeah? But Habibi, you have to watch I've got two things to watch now. You've given me two, yeah? But, but you ain't honestly, seen this. honestly, you got to watch Last no, Samurai, bro. No, I have seen some of this, but I didn't pay any attention. Some of this? That's even worse. I won't pay any attention as an adult. You're disrespectful, bro. I won't pay any attention like an adult. Do you know what it is? You know what is? There's so many scenes in there mm. and so many, so much gems, bro. Gems. Mm. Firstly, you got to watch it just for Bob. Yeah, Bob's a... Bro. There's a guy called Bob in there. Uh -huh. He's an old samurai, bruv. Yeah? Bob's a G. And 
Bob's this guy, too, bro. this guy's Man's this right. guy's the star of the show. He doesn't say a word, bro. Doesn't mm. say one word, bro. But but these two characters, mm. their foes, their enemies, who become friends, bro. Mm. In the end, do you understand? But they're they're this, they're, they're 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 the same coin but different sides if you know what I'm saying. Mm. But it look it, it it shows. So this is the thing about I want to get into this whole thing about gangs and all this stuff later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. about bullying because I, I had a few. Um, I don't know if you saw my post about the the kids getting bullied and stuff and coming yeah. to the gym trying to learn grappling or whatever. But about the the honor mm. of fighting and war. Yeah? yeah, because war is seen as war now is cowardly, bro. Yeah, throwing bombs and mm. you, you see what I'm saying, like, and and I'm not condoning war. Yeah, it's not something that is is a good thing. Mm. But when you look at it in in, in retrospect about the people that participate, it I tell you that makes sense. I think it's the better way to put it is the ability to resolve conflict within a set of rules. Yes. So whichever the rule, whatever the rule set is, yeah. there is honor in that because if you both agree to the set of rules, yeah. you're saying, okay, cool, we have to resolve conflict in this manner. So, if we say, okay, cool, if I beat you at chess, we're done. There's no moving the goalposts. We know the rules of chess. The, the good thing about martial arts in general, and again, we, we got to remember martial and arts. We've got to use the two words. Yeah. And that's where, we, where the war element comes in, where we yeah. think of war. Because yeah. when we look at the samurais and how they engaged, they engaged on a level where there were still rules and war. You could engage in the battle, come off the battlefield, retreat for the day, and man them know where you're staying. They're not going to run up on you. They're I'll give you an example, bro. There's a scene there where they capture him. Mm -hmm. Bro, this scene gives you goosebumps, bro. Yeah? That, there's one guy in there. He's just the raggle one in, in his crew. The Katsumoto's crew, the main, the clan leader, yeah? yeah. He's his boy, right-hand man. So he pulls out the katana to chop his head off, bro. Yeah. Yeah? The guy's just killed his brother-in-law. Yeah, he's about to kill him. Mm -hmm. The you know full full force. The guy goes stop. He stops right there, bro. Mm -hmm. Now think about it, bro. Yeah, this is in the fog of war. Yeah, yep. and this guy's managed to control himself. So, bro, we got an Islamic narration that. Ma yeah, of course. Ali yeah. yeah. and you see that there, it, that blows my mind. That's yeah. it's it's nuts, bro. It this is the thing. These people of engagement. This is yeah? it. But even even sorry to cut you out. Go on. Even the. Hadith about the person urinating in the masjid. It looks yes, like wall, let him finish. Yeah. Not letting yourself get yeah. overwhelmed with what you think. In Emotions. Emotion, right? There's rules and there's regulations yes. and stuff. In a jiu-jitsu match, would it be easy to punch someone in their mouth? Of course you can, Fact, yeah. I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> Neil <laughs> belly, clap, yeah. match done. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But it's not the rules. And sticking to the rules is what you're supposed to... Every single thing, I think it's... Um, it's, it's, it's... I think it's... His name, there's a guy who wrote a book. I'm going to find the name of the book here. And he basically says, there's a quote in the book where he says um, that basically freedom comes from being disciplined. Yeah? yeah. And sticking within the, within the realms of discipline really, really, it's, it's, it gives you what you need to go by. And that happens in every walk of life. There are rules of engagement with your missus. There are rules of engagement with brothers. There yeah. are rights that people have. There are rights that the ground has. There's rights that the earth has. There's rights that you have yeah. of yourself. And by sticking with these rights, there's still rules. Allah's made us so that we can venture out of them if we really wish to. But what good comes from venturing out of them? Yeah. You know what I mean by that? And I think war is a very basic way. It sounds it's basic because it's I see what makes war war basic or fighting or combat basic. If you make it to its extremes, it's life or death. They're two definites. You're either alive or you're dead. Yeah. If you slow, uh, slow it down in towards more of a martial arts perspective, you have some you're hurt and someone else is not hurt. Yeah. Yeah, they're very definite things. Then you put it down to, okay, cool, this would cause hurt or this wouldn't cause hurt. So you, the rules start to go more into it, but that's where it, where it comes from, the idea of chess. I'm going to take your defences away from you. You're stripping someone of their defences. It's very definite concepts. So having those definite concepts, they, they do teach you something about your character because you've got to realise what you're willing to give up to defend that. Yeah. And if you if, if even when you're losing, you're still going to stay within the rules. And the thing is as well... Um Dying, like I give you an example, like as a martial artist, you have to be willing to die. Mm -hmm. That's like over and over again. Like yeah, if you look in a jiu-jitsu class, yeah, if someone's taking your back and got a rear naked choke on you, you're dead, and you've died multiple times maybe in 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 that one and a half hour session, mm -hmm. yeah. But in reality, 
like this is the thing where I want to talk about, like, because we've both worked with young people, yeah, yeah, who are hard to reach, who are, you know, labelled with all sorts of labels, right? Mm -hmm. And um, let me just see if I've uh, give me one sec, bro. Yeah, I think we can go on to this. Yeah, yeah, because I want to see your your experiences, yeah, because um, like we live in London, mm -hmm. and violence is something that especially you live in specific areas, it's something that you're touched by. You might not be in the thick of it. Mm. You might have secondary kind of, you know, you might know a friend who's passed away or been touched by some sort of violence, right? Mm -hmm. And with the violence I'm talking about is, especially when it comes to the young, the shabab, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, people getting, like, attacked with knives recently. Uh, it's not recent, but it's been there's 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 these you know in news the news cycle sometimes it spikes, and yeah. it spikes and then you had the the riots I remember in twenty ten right twenty eleven yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah I remember being in the whole mix of, of that not in the riots bro but <laughs> I remember people coming back to my class saying yeah I, d I, I done this and I yeah. took this and it was like a free for all bro it was crazy it was house get raided because of yeah, yeah, yeah driving my kids to school and some random guys all middle aged all different colors all wearing different sets of clothing. When I listen to the car, and I'm thinking, who are these idiots? I realize he's police. Yeah, bro. Definitely police. He was mad, bro. These guys would never follow each other around yeah. and smash over the door. Like, bro, it was weird. Like, one black guy with Reebok Classics on, another one with shoes on, another one with Come on, be a yeah, all over the place. Bro. Be a better CID. Yeah, bro. It was the most random yeah, yeah. bunch all of guys you could imagine. Yeah. yeah. I went, and the way he stuck his hand, I'm like, brother, no, 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 nobody tells me. And I, was, I thought, don't say a word. Yeah. It's police. Sort of thing. But we had, it, we had a riot in Pembury, like, um, in Hackney, bro. Uh, in, in the nineties, bro, like it was, it was crazy. Like I remember, I remember like being like it, 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 it's it's not um, it's not something that is, is is, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, like we're not what's the word? We're not alien to these kind of things. Yeah. yeah? So I was thinking to myself because I've got kids, you've got kids, yeah, similar ages, yeah. When you start to worry, it's like why is it? Because when we were younger, I don't know about you, bro, but we knew people in in that life. But it was that that life. Does that make sense? Yeah. I just feel like now, maybe because I'm older or whatever, I just can't. I can't understand it. Then I started questioning. I was like, okay, how do we solve this problem? Mm -hmm. So, like with anything, when you do martial arts, you try to solve things for martial arts, right? Yeah. The, the mentality of martial arts. I want to get your point of view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why would you say young men of a certain age feel the need to carry a knife? I have my opinions, but I want to hear yours, innit? And feel that they can take someone's life. And how do you think that we can solve this problem? Oh, again, we're not going to solve it on the podcast here because there are people that are on it right now, innit? But I was like, because you've been in the game, bruv. You've, you've, you've worked on that side of the fence, if you know what I mean, working with young people like that. So I'm going to, that's a big question, but I thought let's scratch the surface. There's something we touched on earlier on, yeah? Um, and it's, the lack of understanding of human life, of, of life in general, yeah? Of the interruption of someone, of something's life cycle. So we don't even grow fruit and veg and realise that if we was to chop down the tree, we would have no more fruit and veg. Again, I'm not, not one of, of any knowledge, but I remember somebody telling me one time, they said to me, every prophet was a shepherd. Yeah. And I was like, what? I said, every single prophet was a shepherd. And I started to think about the qualities that you require to be a shepherd. Now, You've got to have patience. You've got to value the flock that you're walking with. Yeah. But there's also another key thing. People don't understand this, and I'm, it's going to sound really, really dumb. Yeah? If one understands how you use the terminology, you can't have your cake and eat it. But it's not a great, great, and that's a great way of saying it. The best way to say it is you can't have a sheep, yeah, and have la and have meat. It's impossible. You've either got meat and it stops being the sheep that oh, it was. Oh, right. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Or it stops being. So you've got you've got to choose between the two. Now, when you put it that way, every shepherd had to choose between an animal that has trusted it all of its life to now slaughter it and whether it's worthy of, now we're going to have food from it and we're going to get the one coat, coat of, yeah. of, of wool that it's got. We're going to let it live for longer. So there's an understanding of value. We don't even have that with fruit and veg. So the kids that are growing up, they don't even have the understanding of disrupting oh, something's life cycle. What you're saying, yeah. So they don't understand the value of something's life cycle, even from a personal mm -hmm. level. Does that make sense? So you've got guys... That, for example, that will get in an argument with their worker and stab up their worker. Mm. But your worker was making you money. So you didn't even value their Workers life Workers in your... 
you say, say you saw drugs on, 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 yeah. on, on, yeah, okay, yeah. So you've got someone who works for you. You imagine you're cutting off ma- your supply The manager chain. at H&M says, wait, 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 wait. You're late to work. <laughs> Vroom. Shab- you know what I mean? You, bruv, like H&M mm. will be start being one man and a lot of bodies on the floor. Some clothing around the shop, mate. Mm. Yeah? That TK Maxx. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be TK Maxx. <laughs> <laughs> TK Maxx, bruv. Yeah? So... I'm using. I'm really simplifying it, but I'm saying we don't have a value for 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 interruption of life cycles. So you're saying they don't understand the value of life. Yeah, beyond even human life. If it was human life in and of itself, we think that people can can. Yeah. But it's, I think it's, it's on a basic than, level. That's what yeah. you're saying. I think on a basic level because we don't have the idea that that, that they, they don't mm. believe. See, we talk about carbon footprint. Yeah. So when people talk about oh, I make my carbon footprint. Oh, I use my phone and I do this that, another. We don't have that in relation to interrupting somebody's life. So even words. Ah. Oh. I give an example. You realize it's now working as an. I'm going to add to what you're saying because I think what you've touched. I didn't even think of it like that, bro. So look at this, yeah. I've taught kids before, yeah, and I'm not talking about no one in particular. So <laughs> <laughs> I've taught kids before, and I've their kids rude, like their face. I'm like, brother, call your mum in, and we're going to have a meeting. And their mum comes in, and their mum is ratchet. Yeah, yeah, she's on you. Brother, Straight. She's like, oh yeah. my gosh, I can't believe they've done this. And oh my gosh. And when I was little, like, this is why we don't do it. And I'm thinking to myself, bro, you're the same girl that when we were 15, we all took liberties with. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't think when I was taking liberties of your kind that you would grow up to give birth to the next generation. I didn't realize my own carbon footprint. I didn't realize mm. my footprint, my carbon I'm using for the sake of the term. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I yeah. didn't realize the footprint that I was going to leave. Mm-hmm. And because we don't take accountability for the things that we say and what we do, we don't understand the environment that we breed. So again, it goes back to the same thing. You said, why do people carry knives? Now, trying to talk a young person into not carrying a knife, is you're saying to them, basically, you run the risk of being a victim or you be a perpetrator. But the stakes are very, very high. So, if I simplify it, when you joined secondary school, do you remember reinventing yourself? Yeah, I remember. So you start sitting at secondary school, and you're a little bit more aggy than you was in primary school. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, yeah. You're either, you, it's, it's, it's kill or be killed. Yeah. But it's lit- it's not kill or be killed, it's just get status or be trampled on. Yeah. For them, it's literally kill or be killed. The actual, it's the same mentality that we have, but they're thinking, hold on a minute, if I don't carry this, I'm going to be a victim or something. Mm-hmm. But if I carry it, even if I don't use it, I'm going to be the guy that's renowned for it and I've, and I've got it on me. And again, because there is no honour in sticking to rules in general in society, yeah. you're not commended for sticking to rules. The kid that's a virgin in school is a virgin and you laugh at him. Mm-hmm. The kid that doesn't doesn't sneak out of school for lunch break, you laugh at him. There is, it's, you, we commend breaking rules. So there is no honour in keeping rules. Mm. So how can now we tell them now, you two, when you're engaging, you've got to have rules. You can argue, but you can't cut each other's mum. You can fight, but you can't bring knives. You can fight, but you can't bring guns. It's like speaking, it's, you're speaking another language because they're not raised to, to hold rules in any high esteem. Whereas you've got kids, for example, again, you've got, right, when I was coaching at 313, and 313 was my first experience at coaching in a, I coached football with adults, but mm. coaching children and having seen a generation come up. And it's probably the same at Legion, it's probably the same at this, again, yeah. from the same, it's the same group of people, we can yeah. talk about separations, but we yeah. talk about where it comes from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's good people. Yeah. And I remember being there, and them talking about a game that the kids used to play, the teenagers. And the game they used to play was, I'm going to recite an ayah, and you tell me what the next one is. Mm. Brother, we was playing Penny Up on the Wall. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we was trying to see who could chirp this girl. Yeah, yeah. we was trying to see who could be happy slapping. We was happy slapping. Oh, I remember yeah, happy, happy slapping. We was happy slapping people. How? I tried These to forget people. that, bro. But, but what I'm saying is, amongst them, they hold it in high esteem. Ah, yeah. oh, your recitation is better than mine. Still, all right. That's that's. And I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about little Wally kids who's like, oh yes, your recitation yeah. is better than mine. I'm talking about kids that are about it. Mm. That mm. they got the trainers. They can. Walk, they got everything. They look the same as every other kid that you know. But their value, they hold something. At, of value that is worth holding that value and then we stick we work our way around that mm. there is no grounds for value there's no honour amongst thieves there's no no there is nothing you don't snitch the rule is you don't snitch you don't snitch and recently in the past five years a rapper is famous from snitching yeah. so they even now that's gone out the window bruv snitch yeah? nine bruv <laughs> snitch nine he, he says I'm a snitch bruv he said yeah I snitch that's what I do 
I'm out there. And he rubs it in people's face. So man's filming himself like, with his, so now even the one thing that amongst the criminal world sacred. Was, some, was sacred, they, they've get rid of all of the rules. Rule, no rules, no accountability. No accountability is very hard to reason with anybody. You know, you know what I was going to add to, yeah? Mm. I watch cowboy films. I love cowboy films, yeah? Mm-hmm. And the thing I, like, I, love, I love about cowboy films is that that life is pure. And what I mean by that is, yeah, you're a man, you need a weapon. Mm. If you don't, have, you don't have a weapon, you're naked, bruv. Yeah. You're seen as someone lesser. Yeah. So you know the guy that works in the in the hardware store? Yeah. You know you see those cowboy films, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? But you see the cowboy, he's the man, right? Mm-hmm. So in that, in that, you can't you can't talk madness in that time. Yeah. Do you understand? You can't you can't you you can't walk around and say you're something and you're not. But well, look at this though, even in that scenario, yeah. You can't just let off your thing willy nilly. Yeah. This is what I'm saying There's to you. There's still rules of engagement. Thank you. No, so no, no, because because bro. Handy. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, not, it, it, this is what I was getting to. Yeah. So mm. imagine now, yeah. Bro, no one's gonna stop you killing someone. But they used to kill people, and then like the guy would just drag him and put him in the thing. Drag Standard. Him they get the, 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 yeah, they yeah. Take him and just walk yeah, out yeah, there. yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, nah, no. I'm not saying cowboy films are a historical fact. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying yeah. that's what I saw. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. And I can imagine in life being like that, bro. This is the Wild West. Yeah. So. I'm saying we don't have like we're walking around here in a civilized society. Yeah. Yeah. Me and you don't have weapons. You got a thirteen year old who's got a knife, yeah? Yeah. That person holds power over you as a man, as a grown man. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? And they understand that. Yeah. So when you have a weapon, these kids they don't see, it's like, firstly, everything that you just said before about mm. not valuing human life, all that type of stuff, and then you add on top of that, mm-hmm. the guy's got a knife on him. Yeah. And people rate him for ca- carrying that knife. Right. Yeah? And and there's no rules. Yeah, there's no da- there's no dad or, or uncle or whatever it is mm-hmm. who's, who's, who's keeping a tab on these things. Because if you look at, look, we've worked in, 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 with young people, yeah? It's mostly single mother households. Yeah. Majority, majority. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to stigmatize a group of people, yeah? yeah. But um, if the dad's at home and he's on it, mm. doesn't 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 even have to be at home. Yeah. If the dad's involved in his life, clued on. Very, but very. I, again, this is to do with role models. You asked me, yeah. who did I look up to as a martial artist? Yes. And you looked at had it guided yeah. me. Yeah. Now, by default, your dad is your first male yeah. role model as a male. Yeah. 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 And by default, as a woman, your mum is your first female role model. Your first human role model is your mum, mm-hmm. yeah? I'm using terminologies. So the feminine essence yeah, in and of itself is present in every single living being. 100%. The most manly man has a feminine essence and that feminine essence is such a great thing. Be careful, yeah? fam. Right? No, but, no, but, no, but <laughs> I'll tell you I will play him, No, but it's yeah. sweet. I'll tell you what, yeah. I'll give you an example, yeah? You have to, though. I'll give you an example. You have to. You can't be all man, bro. It's he describes, impossible. yeah, and I'm paraphrasing, so yeah. I'm not giving what I've said. He describes the fiercely blazing fire as your mum. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a fe- that's feminine. Feminine, yeah. Now the reason he describes it is as an Alano's best. The reason what I took from it, yeah, is it's your only place to turn to. You will have nowhere else to turn to. It is becomes your go to. Your go to will be the fiercely blazing fire. So you have nowhere else to run to. Does that make sense? Yep. So that element of even when your dad exercises a stereotypically f- sorry, sorry, sorry. stereotypically feminine attribute, yeah, yeah, you appreciate it. So I will give you an example is. Mercy, mercy, yeah, yeah. Mercy okay. is is a, an attribute which you probably find most in women. Yeah, but rahma is a female word. Is it right? It's a but feminine it's a description. Uh, Allah yeah. uses it as a description of himself. Yeah. So the fact of the matter is, is that it's again like I said, it's not it's not a negative to have it. Yeah. But the reason I, I was saying I was saying about the, about about having these energies around you and having these things around you and having the value is you get you first see it from your mum in its purity. And that's all you function off. You function off mercy. The thing that's going to make us, when we finish life, is going to be mercy that's going to get us somewhere. Mm. And the thing that we start life on and that we're given, we're, we're able to be fed through from our, from our, from our, 
our, our starting years. It's mercy. Mm. It's, the, it's one of the biggest things. Like unconditional yeah. love. Your mum yeah. will love you regardless. But you regardless. see prisoners doing life, murdering bare man, bro, and, and their mum's there, bro. You don't see he's their dad saying he's a good boy, bro. He's a good boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never seen a dad. Say, <laughs> the dad's figure for, at home thinking this guy's a waste, man, blood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's a yeah. good boy. I yeah. love him. He's so gentle. I bet you after he done that, he tidied up nicely. All right, cool. But yeah, like. Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. But hold who you hold as your role model is the first thing. So you know this from teaching young people is the first thing you've got to do is you've got to connect with them. And you've got to connect with them to show them something that you, they aspire to want to be mm. or an attribute or something which is similar from you or you can guide them to it. So even if it's knowledge or sense, they want to, they hold, they hold that as something to value. Then they start listening to what you, what you listen to. Mm. It's the same reason why you might go to somebody to get coached or learn a, martial, a specific martial mm. art is that you believe in the martial art then, you, then you're now willing to subscribe to what they tell you to do. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. In the deen, you, uh, the religion came and told us about heaven and hell and then gave us the rules afterward. Also, it gave us a role model, actually. Right, so we had the best role heaven model. and hell role yeah. model, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then we got given rules, yeah? What happens is, is a lot of people have rules and they don't understand the understanding of the rules. So society makes rules and we don't understand them. And everybody that these children are able to relate to doesn't abide by the rules. Now, Aki, I'll ask you a question. What was the age where you didn't want to be a police officer anymore? You mean? Anybody. Anybody in this room. Never wanted to be a police officer. Born like that. <laughs> right. So listen to this. Yeah, look at me. Never. But, so, <laughs> I'll give you an example. Though. I'll give you an example. Yeah, guys. Did you want to be a police officer? Though? No, but yeah. I knew that there was goodies and baddies. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I knew there was a baddie and the goodies upheld the law. There was an outlaw yeah, yeah, and course. someone who abides by the law. Then you start to realise the law doesn't necessarily go with morality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you start to then it stops being absent. Law stops being the pinnacle of of morality. Mm. So we're confused now. What is good or bad? Yeah. Also, so the outlaw can be the good guy as well, bro. Right. That's another thing. Right. But the outlaw Islamically can't be no. a good guy because the law and the creed and the way of life mm. is what is both beneficial yeah. and prescribed. The problem is if we don't have with human law, we don't have it. it has it's fallible. So I'm saying this to you in the sense of a call. But also, we're, we're living in a country where it's not really like Islamic ruling. Right. What I'm no, but what I'm saying, I'm saying to you, even if we forget um, is Islamic ruling, for example, just look at morality-wise. There's a certain set of laws that every human being, well, like, for example, don't lie, right. don't steal. Yeah. Right. I mean, but any yeah, any but society yeah, you go lie, to... But yeah. Parliament lie. Yeah, they yeah? lie, yeah. Right, they steal, yeah? Mm. They tell you to do something and do the opposite. Yeah. They cheat on yeah. Their you words. know what I'm. T- we all yeah, know what yeah. I'm talking about. <laughs> if the timestamp is on this video, we are all gonna know what we're talking about. Because certain man, <laughs> <laughs> man Hancock, yeah, man Hancock, you know I mean? man Hancock, bro, <laughs> right. bro. But so, so that's what I'm not even talking social about social distancing. What yeah. happened to that, fam? So I'm not even talking about about over Islamic rules, and yeah. I'm just talking yeah. about on the basis of what you believe in. The law, laws go with it. Yeah, laws go with it. We don't have that. So. You might believe in, okay, cool. I want to make my family family survive as a, as a youth. Yeah. Remember I said to you that as a kid, I, there was an age where I got to where I needed to make money. Yeah? Um, there's an age where I got to where I needed to make money. Yeah? And I remember thinking it's immoral. For, all right, I'll give you an example. I knew a friend, yeah? Mm. And it's genuinely a friend, yeah? And his friend actually works in the youth sector now. Yeah? And he stopped being able to make money. Yeah? So he said, I'm going to have to sign on. Yeah? So he was vexed. So he went to sign on. He said, when he got to signing on, he started to see everybody going to go and get their money from the, like, the little gyro thing. Yeah, gyro, money. blood. I ain't heard so that he for ages. So he looked at them mm. and he said, hold on a second. You might not all get in your signing on today. That means you all got money today. So he started selling drugs to the people that he's going to the job centre with. <laughs> so he'd go job centre with them, watch them get their money, then take their money off them. And he realised, he said, when he, growing up, he realised that was so immoral because they were his brothers. Mm. He went there with them on the same premise. Mm. And the best way to make money was to take advantage of the situation that they were in. Yeah. Does that make sense? So what I'm trying to say to you is, is that when you have those, for me, I couldn't stick by th- those levels of immora- immor- immorality. I have many levels that I do stoop to. And I'm not, say, I'm not saying that proudly. I'm saying it. I'm not making up like, hey, if it's immoral, I can't imagine doing it. But there were some things I couldn't do and it wouldn't, it wouldn't work in my head. But yeah, I couldn't shank someone, bro. Do you see what like, I'm saying? I couldn't put a knife into someone's body, bro. bro not even with a compass, fam. Not bro. even in anger. Not even in anger, bro. bro, bro I couldn't I do, do that, bro. I'll tell you this right now. Yeah. If you ask some people who have been stabbed, could they stab somebody? They would say no. Then they would retract it and probably say yes. And it would fluctuate. What do you mean? They would say, ah, oh, 
I wouldn't stab anybody. Then they'd be holding a minute. Well, I got stabbed and what used to they do me? I keep every decision, the majority of decisions I've made wrong as an adult is when I've realised something's been done to me oh, I and I begrudged saying. being myself. Yeah. I said, being the person that I was didn't get me anywhere. I ain't got dough like that person. Mm. So why can't I act like that as well? Then I do that and that doesn't even sit well with me either. Yeah? Do you see what I mean by that? Mm. So when now you can't draw the line where, where, where who's the victim or the perpetrator, then you, it's very difficult to interrupt that as a mentor, as a youth, someone in the youth to say, jump in the middle and say, right, stop now. Say, no, I'm not stopping now. I got it's stabbed. It's a cycle, bro. I got stabbed, so someone's got to get stabbed. Does that make sense? You say, right, stop now after you stab them. And then he, his family says, no, but hold on, my brother got stabbed, so how come you can get stabbed? And it goes around in circles. That's what happened. Have you heard of that famous war, Arab war, bro? The 100 year war. Mm -hmm. There was a war, went on for, I think it was 100 years. Oh, Google it, bro. Over a camel, bro. Man, it started over a camel. It went on for a hundred years. I think it was, uh, uh, t t check it, 100 year war over camel, bro. Over camel, type in over camel, bro. Yeah. So imagine those guys a hundred years later or 90 years later, did they, did they even know what, what it was about? It was a cycle, bro, that just kept on going, kept on going. You probably asked them, they probably don't even know why. See what you yeah. just said, yeah? Th that happened in the gangs in my years. Hmm? 40 years. Was it 40 years? Yeah. So, so, so you look at this. Okay. It happened 40 years ago or? No, it happened. A 40 year conflict between two cousin tribes in Arabia owned by what, a camel. What, when was this? Uh, it's probably time ago, bro. Bro, look at, bro sweet. Bro. Just recent, bro. <laughs> smoke for the camel. Smoke for that camel, bro. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Camel. Sorry, bro. Yeah. So, yeah, 40 year war, whatever. Yeah, but you're going to carry on. But you see what you're saying? I got it in the gangs. That Peckham and, was it? Peckham and, and uh, Lewisham. Yeah. So Peckham and Ghetto, you, when you watch these certain things, people don't, weren't there at the beginning of it. Mm. I wasn't there at the beginning of it, but I sure bloody knew that I weren't meant to be going Peckham. Yeah, yeah, I it. knew if I go Peckham... Is that Tottenham Hackney, cool. bruv? The whole popcorn beef and all that. But I heard about it in school, bruv. I was like, right. but I don't even know this guy popcorn, bruv. Right, look at this now. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why, am I, why am I... Like, why I'm not, not, not the fact that he didn't, he didn't deserve to die, obviously, bruv. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like... But Ra, bun Tottenham, bruv. Did you see what I'm saying? Bruv, yeah. I'll give it, I'll give it, that's, I give you what you mean. You, you, already, you adopt it. Yeah, it's like, but, but why? Like, you just, it's just this kind of like... Um, but, but look, you got that. I'll give you an example. There's online, yeah? There's a 20-minute traveller fight, yeah? Traveller fight? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Say yeah, yeah. no more, say no more. Mustard rules when it comes <laughs> to fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that. You can't let him get up, let him get up. Yeah, yeah. There's rules of engagement, yeah? Bro, these two guys rock, yeah? They rock in a barn, and they go from one side of the barn to the other side of the barn, Yeah. And it is the brother's vest is rip off, man's tea is at his mash up, but he firms it. And then after a while, they just stop it because the what, I think there's a bald one who's who's winning, and obviously they say, "Are oh, you bested him?" Yeah. Mm. So at the end of it, the bald one's jumping up and down. Like, yep, I got him. I got him. The one who he smacked up went up to him and said, "Listen, I said that's it now. I said I've done it now, so my brothers don't have to basically." Yeah. And he's pointing at the one that's who real won. Talk, he's blood. pointing at the one who won. If you looked at it, you'd be like, "He must have won." Like he's pointing in this one's face. I said, it's over now, it's over. He goes, what do you mean? It's over. He goes, you lot asked for it. He goes, what do you mean? We didn't ask for it. <laughs> bro, they've been rocking for 20 minutes. I went live, bro. If you type it in, the rock lasts 20 minutes. I've never seen. Bro, the the headshots here. I'm like, oh my God. Hey, blood. Must be. Hey, hey, him, bring bro. it up, bring it up, yeah. And then play it and pause it. We'll, we'll watch it at the end, bro. Uh, bro yeah, you see the way it is, bro? When you watch the rock, it's, bro, the fight is so cold. But they don't even know why they're fighting. You know what I love about uh, the travellers, bro? Mm. That's what I love about them, bro, yeah? Number one, they're down for their set, bro. Yep. Yeah? They're family, bro, yeah? Number two, um, no no one no one is bigger than the tribe, bro. Yeah. Yep. Like, you can't just go and do something. you got to get you got to get signed off. Do you see what yep. I'm saying? Is it that no, one? scroll down. Bro, click on, click on videos. Bro, your Googling skills are not <laughs> dead today, it's bro. It's like a tra traveller fighting barn. Let's go internet, fam. But you know what's mad? You see what you're saying, yeah? But again, that's we get, remember you deal within the, the realm of rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you stop. But you know what? If imagine you got like the whole Peckham Tottenham uh, Peckham was it Lewisham? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, was it Lewisham, bro? That's what you're straight up. Right yeah. what, what's the time? How much time is it to the fight? Twenty minutes, bro. Told you. <laughs> I told you. I'm not even lying. It's not even lying. I'm not, you know, exactly. Oh yeah, it was no, no, it's 25. Hey, load it up and we watch it later, innit? My nah. man's This brother up. is on the <laughs> smoke. You see him. He's got MMA gloves on, bro. Bro, he's wrapped his hands. This guy's hands are a madness. Bro? I think I've seen this 
His hand, the whole bun. See the bun? They cover basically the whole of it. Right. They, they fight from one corner to the other corner. You got a bun let's just watch it now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he is on. Snatch, exactly. Look at him, look at him. Look him. He's the next thing is, no rules, no. It's a fight, a clean fight. When you're in close quarters, you can do what you want. As long as it's no right. fight. And I'm not going to lie to you, the one in the vest can no rock. No. He can rock, he's mad. <laughs> Bro, I ain't gonna lie, there's any subtitles in this one, bro. Bro, bro you don't need no subtitles on that, bro. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Damn! He's firming it, bro. Bro, they don't know why they're fighting. That is That's phenomenal. madness. When, they, when you see it, yeah, you're gonna that clap. That one looks like a crackhead, bro. Look at this one, eh? Bro, no. <laughs> bro, listen. See this, eh? Yo. <laughs> I watched this yet and I bro, was. Check his calves, bruv. His calves. Bro. bro, this guy is on absolute. Ma- I'd like to know who it is, but I don't want him to think I'm looking for him because I don't want to. <laughs> oh. yeah, we've already clearly seen he can fight with the Oof. He's kind of bled, you know. Bro, like, he is. Um, bro, he's. Bro, these men train <laughs> to defend their family. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, they're, 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 they're fighting for more than yeah, money, bro. Bro, they're all this in shape. Honor, on the benefit, on, on the idea that they could get called up at any given time. I'm saying to you. Have you seen them give each other messages through, through YouTube? I right, pause this for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pause they this for a second. Out. All right, Danny. I'm here now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going on madness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, they need to learn Jiu Jitsu, bro. They, could, they, could, they can end a lot of uh, bro, bro, but heartache. The, but bro. this is what's so, so mad. This is, this is what, again, the aim is not to kill anybody. Because yeah, yeah. you can't chase someone down when you hit the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So when you check it, look at that, bro. Bro, that's a mad thing. Brad, he's he's taking off his wraps, bro. He's oh, his wraps. Brad, yeah, come on. Put him in the middle again, yeah, eh? Turn, turn it down, bro. So get your brother down. Come on. You boys. How do you say, look, whatever it is now, you got fair play. Have you been beating today? You got fair play. Have you been beating today? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Right. You got fair play. 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 You got fair You got fair play. 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 Really Don't you think you should have had this discussion mean? before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what just, just before you started, when you <laughs> was doing all that, man couldn't say, brother. It, what, is it is it Willie or Tom no. that you would? No, no, it wasn't even me. So, all right, cool. Like, it could have been avoided, bro. bro. You know what it is the respect that these men have for each yeah. other afterwards is a different thing because bro, bro. he can't turn around and say he can't rock, yeah, yeah, and he yeah. can't turn around and say that he can't rock because he it's not him. cowardly, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not cowardly, bro. And it's sad. It's, it's sad. It's sad. There was a stabbing the other day, and I, I don't. I'm, I'm saying this because. I, I'm cutting out bits of it, yeah, because it will kind of bait up. But my kid saw someone who died, yeah, recently, yeah. What do you mean? As a stabbing, they got stabbed. But three people were rushing this one brother, and they came with knives, and he had a knife. They were having a sword fight, basically, and stabbed him. But as far as I know, the brother passed away. Now they've seen that. That my son is a kid. How old is he? Ten. Yeah, that's mad, bro. You know what I'm saying to you? My son who's five, said, no, sorry. My son who's, who's five, guy on six, said he saw it. Six, sorry, six. I didn't see it, bro. He looked at the window. Oh, he's outside the Bruv, it was outside, casually. Woom, 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 woom. Yeah. yeah? Casually, 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 casually. Right? Now, now, I'm going to tell my son, you don't need to carry a knife. Yeah. You're going to say what? And be the guy on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that who I'm... You, you see the reasoning now? Now, I'm not saying... I have to now out train that out of him. Yeah? And he's probably going to go to school and they're going to be preaching that. The song's preaching that. I remember we were talking about this before. We are talking about low-level hypnosis. Mm. So hypnosis that is in your subconscious. It's, it's, it's not, oh, I sat down with this guy and he said, blah, 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 and there was some twirly things. I'm talking about believing that something is true. The belief that something yeah. is true and then you act on it. Yeah? Because it happens so many times. It happens so many times. And then yeah. that's and what they've just kind it's of like, yeah. Yeah. So music is telling him, right, you've got to carry this. Yeah. This is telling him he's got to carry that. So consistently, he's going to be in that mentality of, okay, cool. That's how I have to survive. And remember, the first thing you need to do as a human is survive. Mm. Can I say something though, bro? Yeah? Like, because... Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. Um, when I had these two, uh, the two parents came in, yeah? And 
two different approaches, yeah. yeah. So they came to look, my son's getting bullied. And um, so w one kid, he was dyspraxic. Um, so I don't know if you know what dyspraxia yeah. is, yeah. So, but in that school, like they were just calling him terrorist and all this like madness. So he, you know, he slapped up one of the, the guys, yeah. yeah. But, and then he ended up like, it, it's a madness, it's school politics. And yeah. then he's like, you know what? The, the, the mom said, you know, I'm taking him out, yeah. So yeah. she took him out. And I'm not saying you should go up, but if someone puts their hands on you, mm. you have to retaliate, bro. Like, yeah. if, if you're getting bullied, this is my opinion, yeah? Like, I'm not saying do that with your kids, yeah? Mm. But if someone puts their hands on me, you have to retaliate. You, you're not going to be a, an aggressive person, mm -hmm. but you have to put them in their place or, 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 or subdue them or... Okay. Yeah, go on. So, I'm sorry to cut you, okay. yeah, But can you see how we're now... now We've already stepped into a very dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if somebody puts their hands on me, mm. I tell you to put your hands on them back. So if somebody pulls a knife on me, yeah, should I tell my son to pull a knife back? No, no. Can you? But can you see how it gets taken no. now? Yeah, yeah. Because it's taken, the it's rationale taken. in their head is you said if someone does something to me, I do it back. No, I didn't say that. Though. No, no. But I'm saying, but, mm. but I'm saying how how on a primitive level, cool. You're gonna do what's needed to subdue them. I would the say the easiest way to subdue somebody who's trying to. To, who's trying to stab you in theory is to stop them from being able to stab you mm. there's an easy way of doing that mm. there's a complicated way of doing that and it's a way that has more risk the the human so brain what would you what would you what would you advise them it's to do with teaching people a how to deal with conflict and how to to yeah. to, 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 to disengage from conflict before then okay yeah. and it depends from situation to situation this is it? what i'm saying yeah, yeah you're right diffuse the situation mm. but also don't be a victim Right. Don't walk around like a walking victim. Right. Yeah. No. So I'll tell you the second, mm. the second mm. story. Yeah. Mm. Well, try these things here, bro. These. By the way, just to let you know, uh, we yeah. need to clear myself in a bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're almost done anyway. Yeah. Do <coughs> you like the mic and axe? Yeah. I'm addicted to them, bro. Yeah, bro. My son tried to get me. To oh, we need to clear now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Take a box back for your for your boy. Yeah. All day long. Um. I don't have to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's on camera now. It's got to arrive yeah, now, bro. Yeah. So um. The second one, and I think for me, it's less about what you're going to do to the to, to your. Every, every person you'd give different advice to, mm -hmm. depends on the person, right? Like the whole hadith of that guy who came and asked us what's his name. I can't remember what the question was. Was it halal to do something or ask? What was that uh, question? You just said something so random. Oh, I forget it. But basically, the guy came with this look in his face, innit? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no, you tell me. And he was saying something like. Could I do kill? I think it's kill this person, or yeah, is it? Yeah. Uh, oh, what's yeah, the punishment yeah. for this? For killing, yeah, something. or something like that, yeah. And then he gave the answer, and then uh, the same. Th he would give it the same, the same to the same question. He would give a different answer to someone else, yeah, because of the intention of that person. When you see the, yeah. but the second one was, so the kid was getting bullied, and he was getting slapped up across the whole school, bro. Everyone was just like walking all, all over him. Now, for me, it's not even about the bullying because that is too late then. By the time your child is that's happening to them, it's kind of not too late, but you're doing damage limitation now. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? But for me, it was like, as a father, mm -hmm. your job is to raise a child who is self-confident yeah. and understands this whole thing about don't fight and stuff. Yeah, but it's better to not fight if you know how to fight. Do you see what I'm saying? If, you're, if your child knows how to defend themselves, they won't need to fight, man. It's best to be a warrior in a garden exactly. than a in a war. Bro. Exactly, bro. So, so uh, what I was trying to say to the dad, I said, I said to the dad, look, you got to move, to, you got to get him out of school, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he's thirteen years old and he's never done any. He's never been put under pressure. Like, yeah. if you look at in a controlled environment, like a jujitsu class or a wrestling class, you're being put under pressure in a controlled environment with a coach, and then does that make sense? You've been taught certain things. Now, imagine you're doing that from the age of five the age of 16 mm -hmm. that's almost 10 years of training you see what I'm saying yep. I can tell you now I had two fights in my whole life ever mm -hmm. and I've been in sketchy situations that I've managed to get myself out of just by talking mm -hmm. just by submitting to my ego saying you know what allow it man let's forget it and walk away yeah the, the two times I, I fought a person it was this year, kickboxing fight, bruv, in, in, uh, outside the toilets, bruv. It was hilarious. He did kickboxing. Mm -hmm. And I was shot. So we just fought, bruv, we just like licking each other. And then after we just walked away. Yeah. But this guy was getting on my nerves for the whole week anyway. But 
But I didn't need to fight, bro. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? But that's because of the martial arts kind of thing. Like, I know how to fight. I don't feel scared, innit? I don't feel mm. scared to be put in this situation. Do you see what I'm saying? But see, that's that's the key thing, yeah? There's a few things. One is, what is winning a fight? Exactly. Like those guys, innit? But here's my thing. In a scenario where there is no rules, there is no such thing as winning a fight. Winning is surviving. Yeah. So you only need to do what is adequate enough for you to survive. Actually, you winning is whatever the crowd says. <laughs> well, that's my point. It's, what, it's the propaganda well, that happens the, after right, the fight, isn't it? Right, but that's yeah, the yeah. Let me tell you what I'm saying. Back in the day, I'm not saying this has ever happened. Yeah? But it's I a hypothetical have, I, situation. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I could have been in a fight in New Cross, yeah? And my school's in Deptford. Yeah. I could have got punched up in the fight, worked. Get back to Deptford and tell the different story. Yeah, yeah. propaganda, bro. <laughs> right now, yeah. now the, the, it's already filmed. It's on video. Yeah, yeah. Someone's already got you embarrassed. Your you mum's watching it already. Right, so you feel like you have to get somebody back. Now, one of the things to instill in your children is that winning the fight is surviving and being able to get home and to live another day. It, there is no winning in in if there's no rules. So if there's no rules and no criteria to win by, you're going to be chasing it's a, lose. It's a, loss. a rabbit down a hole. Mm. So I um, the brother was trying to punch me up. So I broke his nose. You break his nose, he's going to want to stab you. He wants to stab you, you're going to want to shoot him. Because it was no cutoff point. You moved the goalpost. What was the goalpost? How do you win the fight? Escalation, always right. escalation. So my yeah. thing is, if you can concentrate on only being able to get home and maintain and keep yourself safe, and you do that, then you then try not to worry about what gets said the next day. Because, oh, my man made you, oh, my man made you run home. Okay. Oh, I swear my man banged you in your face and all you did was throw him on the floor and ran off. Okay. <laughs> I went home, innit? I'm all right. Yeah? The key, I think, is to is that's one of the keys of understanding because they're trying to win a fight that there's no win there's no winning to. And that's the difference between when you learn martial arts and when you learn there is a there is a criteria that you should stick between. And even then you're told to use there's 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 moves that are relevant to certain situations. So I'll grab you if it's like this. Mm. I'll throw you if it's like this. I'll strike you if it's like this. I'll put you to sleep if it's like this. I'll break your arm if it's like this. You've got things to stick by. And I feel like um Teaching young people how to defend themselves, but also make them confident enough to be able to turn away from conflict. This is it. So I'm not going to get into it. And I think that's what a lot of parents don't get, bro. They think that their their kids are going to, unless their kids bad mind, bro, they're going to come and. You know what I'm saying, but a lot of the times they get humbled on the map. Do you think you could go up to Umi Ibn Kitab, yeah, and tell him about himself, and that's going to going to make him get mad? No. Do you think you could go up to him and say, "You're not even that tough"? He's either going to say, "Raw." Even in even if it, with a tall enemy, he's not just going to go and tump them up. And Allah knows best. You'd think, all right, cool. Are we going to wrestle? There'd still be a criteria to stick by. Yeah, Let's yeah. wrestle and see who does it. Yeah. yeah. But we're so our identity is so messed up in how we feel about ourselves that when we're pushed, we go to the extreme and often participate in something that we can't live with the consequences. You're writing checks that like uh, was I'm it? You, you, you can't. You can't. You can't settle, blood. Yeah. yeah. Simple. And I think. Happened yesterday on um, BKFC. Yes, yeah, the bare knuckle fighting championship. Okay, right, right. Do you know Hector Lombard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my uh, days! I saw that, bro. I bring that up, bro. Some guy came in. You watch it. <laughs> watch it. But bring watch that it. up. This is why you don't. You but don't, why is bringing that up? Yeah, you don't run up on certain. Uh, uh, so something happened to me once. Yeah, like this is a while back, and I got into altercation mm. in um, Galleons Reach. I don't know if you've ever been there, bro. Other side. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the armpit that. of East London, bruv. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm there, yeah. And the guy's tried to run me over, blood. Like, you know, like, just trying to hit me with his car. I was with my wife. She wears niqab, bruv. It was like, mm. you're a target, bruv, yeah? So he's come out his car. He he goes, why did you hit my car, bruv? So, you know, it, was, it, was, it, it got to a stupidness, yeah? Mm. And then, bruv, I was... Bro, I was fuming, but then I was thinking, bro, I don't want to get into this in front of my kids and all that. So I said to him, listen there, let's just make a decision, yeah? Why don't you just get in your car and I go about my business and just pretend this all will never happen, bro? Mm. This is dumb. Pause it for a sec, bro. Yeah. Pause it, man. Sorry. Yeah, ma <laughs> run up on man, get run up on. First, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Bro, guess what happened? He got in his car and I went, and that's it. Sold. I was like, rah! Like, that was easy. Bro, do you feel... Even a lot of brothers get drawn out by by their missus. Mm. Oh, you didn't do nothing. Why didn't you do nothing? Nah, my missus is not like that, bro. That's my point. So yeah. you see your level of confidence in yourself. Mm. You knew what you were willing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you also knew that you don't have to do it. Nah, nah, that's all long, bro. 
question you end up asking yourself subconsciously is, am I willing to lose my freedom for this? Yeah. Same people that I'm defending, I'm going to sign myself away for yeah. 25 years to not yeah, defend. Yeah, that's longer. Because ultimately, they're not in direct danger. Does that make also, sense? Also, like, leave my kids fatherless. Or like, that's what like, I'm you to. got to be able to use your imagination, isn't it? And that's oh. a lot. Of, I think a lot of kids, if they just use their imagination, like I had the conversation with my son, yeah? Mm. I said to him, look, if you don't study, let's 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 do like a role play, innit? Yeah. Let's just like run it through like as if it's a movie, innit? So imagine now you don't study. Okay? All right, cool. So what do you think is gonna happen? He's like, I don't know. I just let's let's uh, just imagine it, yeah? Mm. He's like, I'm not gonna get good grades. Oh, okay, right. So like you're not gonna get good GCC grades. You guys, I go, yeah. Okay, so what do you reckon is gonna happen after that? Let's just play, do like a role play thing, yeah? Mm. So he's like, I don't know. I go, you're probably not gonna I mean, you're gonna you're gonna do something in in college because you have to go to college, right? Yeah. So you do a course that you probably won't like. Do you reckon if you go to GCSE, do you reckon you're gonna like doing what you're doing in college? Mm. He's like, probably not. Yeah. He goes, okay, you finish college. Do you reckon you're gonna get in university? He's like, nah. I go, then what's gonna happen? I'm gonna go and get a job. Okay. Would you hire someone if they didn't have GCSEs or anything? Yeah. Mm. He's like, no. I go, then you know where are you gonna work? You're gonna work somewhere where it's low skilled, right? So think about the loss. So I, I talked him through the whole thing. I go, then I, you get married, yeah? You, you, you're going to be struggling. Yeah, we all did. We all been there, yeah? yeah? And then what's going to happen? You're going to be a second generation in this country or third generation in this country still in the ghetto, bruv, living in a council flat, bruv. Is that what you want? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So just use your imagination. Before something happens, just think to yourself, like, talk yourself through it. What oh. is, where is this going to end? Firstly, our imagination is capped. Yeah. Young people don't read anymore. They don't so they're required that. to see something with their own eyes. Yeah, Even if, it, even if it's uh, glamorized or glorified through making a film out of it, mm. for them to believe it. So asking them to think ahead is, is like asking for gold. Crazy, bro. Yeah? <laughs> the first thing. Secondly, people often take um, the bad, the bad, and they pay more attention to the bad than the good. We do it ourselves. We say, oh, that person's a snake. Why? Because one time they did something behind my back but they've done something in front of your face 560 million times. So are they a snake or not a snake? Mm. Two things. And I say that to say this because sometimes they won't see the good in the situation, they'll only see the bad. So I'll give you an example. When we were younger, there's a film called Scarface. Mm. And in Scarface, you watch the whole film and then them say, oh my gosh, you see me? Oh, I want to be like Scarface. Scarface was, was, a, was a refugee, came out of a camp, did well, made money. Okay, Scarface killed his sister, killed his best friend. <laughs> his sister? <laughs> yeah, killed his sister. Yeah? Years ago, there was a Graham MC who had this in the lyric, yeah? He said in the lyric, yeah, um, this is just for the rhyme, and he says, oh, he won't be happy till he's got a Range Rover parked in his two-car drive beside the Roadstar. I'm heavy on the roads, I'm a Roadstar. You be thinking that you're Scarface? No, sir. I watched the movie closer, I'd rather be Sosa. Mm. Yeah? So sad. Right. But man, them <laughs> don't realize they'll watch it and they never cotton on to the fact that Mr. Sosa hasn't left his job. I didn't have a yeah. hadouken, bro. He didn't hear it. But it's so mad because imagine it's what I mean remember there's gems. I remember that I was listening to that in in that, that, that's a gram MC called Den. And I remember listening to it thinking, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and hype. And I'm thinking, MC d- um It's called Den Den from, from Roadside. Jeez, yeah. From Brixton, from Brixton. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I was thinking about the guy with the dreads, bruv. Um, with a go to. That could be a lot of people. I know, bruv. That Sorry, could, man. That could be me in a MC week. De- you know? MC <laughs> Den, bruv. No, 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 no. You're thinking of Debt. You're thinking Debt. Debt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, yeah? yeah? yeah, no, got, yeah, yeah he's not from South London. No, no. He's, is, he from, is he from South? I don't think he's, he's from He's from East South, bruv. That's the one whose lyric is. Yeah? Now, when he said it, it's so mad because people are getting hyped up and they're not listening to the content of what he's mm. saying. But what the point he made always stuck with me. I'm like, why would you look at this guy in the movie because it's about him and you aspire to want to be that and you miss it so another example is this you've got um, in Transformers yeah yeah. you've got Autobots and Decepticons yeah who's the leader of the Decepticons Megatron you sure yeah there's a car on a Starscream bro he's a snake right bro. you see what you just said big snake man don't realise that Starscream has been pushing he's manipulating he's manipulating manipulating the yeah, whole yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true, it's true and bro. people miss it Star- they miss Starscream to the max they're like oh he's a Wally He's a Wally, but how come, bruv, I watched... Imagine he survived, bro. Bruv, I was watching a cartoon, like a new version of it, the other day with my kids, like a series, and Megatron was rocking Optimus Prime for something that, that, that Star Optimus Scream is saying that he, lo- that he robbed. Then they're fighting, then they someone goes, stop, 
No, he goes, you know you two are fighting. What for? Oh, you robbed the robbed this. He goes, no, we didn't. He goes, but Starscream. He goes, but Starscream's not here. We we don't roll with Starscream no more. These times, Starscream's there, getting some new <laughs> new new villains from some another planet. Bro, <laughs> he's off with the thing that he robbed far away in a galaxy far away. Yeah, and these men are beefing. Man's bro. breaking down. <laughs> man's breaking down Transformers, bro. bro. <laughs> I'm like, this don't make no sense. He's but watching bear behind the right, yeah, You know bro. this guy, bro. You know this guy. He's that one guy. He's, he's, he's just there. sitting there. He's just sitting there. We're watching a film with him or something, yeah? And he's just sitting there. Like, you need to do a arrival. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro. I so need to do a breakdown of this, bro. It's 100%. so magic because when you check it, people don't realise who's, who's running the show. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And sometimes yeah. they want to be the person that they think is running the show and that person's not successful. Mm. Now, again, we've been given examples yeah, of people to follow and people to emulate. And it's very easy for us to say because the last yeah. guy did us in, I mean, in ways that other people are not uh, guided to, yeah? Alhamdulillah. It, it, so I'm not saying it, but I'm saying even people that you hold morally sound, you don't want to emulate them. It's not, it's, you miss the point of it. And people miss it and they miss it, miss it, miss it, miss it, miss it because their ceiling is capped. Okay, let's watch this Hector Lombard thing. What's the mount box? Um, um, so, above, just because we obviously we skipped it. Pause it for a sec, bro. Right. So, so you were saying what happened here, bro? Hector Lombard just fought Joe Riggs, yeah, yeah. In the bare knuckle fight and won. And is the next contender to come up who wants to fight him? So he's so guys come up. So he's come in the ring. Come in the ring. Oh, okay. Was talking. Now this happens regularly, yeah. But the problem is, you need to know who you're messing with <laughs> <laughs> because some people don't take kindly to that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, that like Habib, bro, with Conor McGregor, bro. You're not saying the fight. Yeah. No. And to be fair, I, when I watched some of it back, I watched some of what Habib, um, Conor said to Habib back here. Yeah? Outrageous, I was thinking, isn't it? He did good, bro. Yeah, he did. Some You're lucky trash, he let go. Bro, there was one where man says, I, Habib is tr- he's lost in translation, but the guy, guy goes, Salam alaikum, Habib. Congratulations, Conor yeah, McGregor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> cannot say Salam alaikum and congratulations. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. And then Conor says, no, we can say what it. Why can't he? Why? He said, and do he just, somebody. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, bro, like anywhere where, I've seen people on dower tables lose it, but bro, so <laughs> I've seen them go mad for less, bro. Like, but yeah, some but he, you don't do that with he, with him, yeah. Like he has ghaira, bro. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying to yeah, you, bro? Yeah, yeah. He had the ghaira for the din, didn't it? In his yeah. heart, it was like, bro, I can't sit here and listen because he could e- easily, but I probably wouldn't have said nothing, bro. Yeah. Stuck for love, bruv. Mm-hmm. Yeah? But in him, it's like, hold on one second. You can't say congratulations to the whiskey mm-hmm. and salam alaikum in the same, in the same sentence, bruv. Yeah, yeah. But he had, he's got it. But you can tell, like, he's from good stock, innit? Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? He's grand. But yeah, it? so this guy, you're saying he comes up to him. He comes up to Hector and he starts trying to talk about fighting him next. And Hector just says, brother, all this one. This <laughs> Go play it, play it, bro. Tucked him in. <laughs> Hector's looking sick. Oh! Bro, Joe Riggs, the guy he just fought on today. <laughs> the guy he just fought was like, no, Hector. Bro, look at it in the ears as well, bro. It hits him in his ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, the guy's first response to put his hands up and say, stop, watch. Oh, he... Two words, oh. bro. Watch oh. his hands. He doesn't know where it's coming it's from. Like, <laughs> it's like when your mum hits you. Get over there, get over there. The woman ducks, what's the woman? She's, she's like, gone. Like, she is gone. But she whoever said, whoever made the, the background music is a troll, bruv. Easy, 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 easy. Uh, bruv, Hector Lombard is looking sick. He came, he gave him a two-piece chicken, bro. Two-piece, my brother. He's a judo guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. But in, it's what people don't understand here. In Cuba, they send you to a school of Olympic level where you practice basically every oh, Olympic sport. I saw sport. that, your Romero thing, bro. they select you for the best sport. So all of them can box. In theory. Oh, Some I see. Some of them maybe badly, but they can box. They can do judo. They can do a bit of everything. So they do a, they do a bit of everything it's and then they pick school. something. You go there, you're an elite athlete. Now you're going to select you. I, can't, I don't know if they still do it, but it was something they did back in the day. Look, right. look, look, who stop, look who pulls him away, though. The one. The one who rocked, yeah. No, the one who, yeah, the one who lost is pulling him away. Yeah. Watch it. Yeah. It's not worth it, bro. Oh, what, sorry, watch the woman in the back smiling. Yeah, she soon changed her to watch. <laughs> oh, she's gone. Get me out of there. Get me out of there. She's Don't like, worry, fam. She's all good, bro. She knows the exit route. She didn't Get take nobody with her as well. She yeah. didn't say, no, come with me. Nobody. Not even the old man. Oh, but there's that <laughs> Colonel, Colonel Sanders in there. Bro, bro. He's still shot. The, 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 the boxer, brother, he's missing as well. Who is this guy? What do you reckon this guy is? Is he the hype man? I think, oh, I think he's in his corner. In the do, you know, do you know what he looks like? Like Do you know what he looks like? Have you seen? Have you seen? Nelly. Have you seen Click, bro? Click, yeah, yeah, yeah. click with it. You know when yeah, the, he pauses the time, yeah, yeah. he just slaps the hell out of the guy, and the guy goes, yeah, yeah. "What?" <laughs> <laughs> this is what he's doing right here, bro. <laughs> he's bashed, bro. He's it's gone. Good. 
What do you reckon the fight's gonna go? Bro, this bare knuckle thing, bro. Yeah. bro it's mustard, I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. Do you watch bro. them? Oh, it's different. Is it? Yeah, it's different, I'm not gonna lie. But they're still wearing wraps, though. Is it for the wrist? For the wrist and for their, for the, for the sort of knuckles from bur- for their knuckles from bursting. But what people don't realize is this: shit. this is why it's non-practical when you train for boxing for, for MMA in a certain way. Oh, yeah? Okay, right. So ask Khalid, yeah. Um, and if you don't get a chance, message Khalid because he knows his business, he knows his stuff. Yeah. If you're defending in boxing gloves, you're defending. With the idea that the glove, you need to see over the oh, glove. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. So when you now take the gloves off, you now have to defend here. So a lot of these guys that have been training in boxing have been training to defend with their hands here. Mm. Yeah, so you see a lot of cuts around the eyes because they're not accommodating for that. Whereas if you bare knuckle box, you know how to do it. That's why even, like I said, the travellers that bare knuckle fight, they know how to fight with no gloves. You could put a boxer in there with them and most of them will just will, will, will smoke mm. them. Because just, just damage-wise, just damage quality... You're a fight connoisseur, blood. Oh, man, <laughs> man. <laughs> sitting there like with his, uh, whatever, KA, whatever it is, blood. <laughs> it's connoisseur. In. <laughs> you have to, you have to. Um, Luke, well, if I could go for another two hours, blood, we could do like a whole fight companion if we're... <laughs> but you know what? What I want to do as well is, um, inshallah, like once we get all the... Uh, so you see the setup, we've changed it up a little bit. What would be good is to watch back some jiu-jitsu fights, you know, break it down. Get, we've got more chairs in it, so we can get you know a few people in here and you know vibe it up a little bit. Um, but again, I definitely want you on again, bro. If you if you'll have us, bro. Um, I think it was very interesting. I, there's a lot of other things I wanted to talk about, but again, conversation. I want to I want to keep it smooth and everything. So, if you are watching this video and you haven't liked or subscribed, you're a creep and you're a hater probably. Let's send Luke to your yard, bro. Yeah. <laughs> But you got like, two different photos because I see you don't take them side on photos. Yeah, I'm not even built for that type. No, of no. Thing. If this one's your that one, bro, here. that's you your one. It's a nice one. So no, it's nice. It's nice. You're then, looking crisp. I can goes, see the fit. I, I can see the shape up. Is fresh. Do, do it yourself. <laughs> no, no, a little something. something like okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I, told, I told you, yeah. Like because you were looking rough on Friday, bro. It's all over the place. Everything's all over the place. You get what I mean? It's mad because I look see some of the other brothers in there and I'm a break. I'm like, right, you man. You, you had know, to bring it up, blood. And he come and wear jeans and that. I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's what you're doing, yeah? Cool. I'm not going to say no names, bro. I'm going to say no names, yeah? But I mean, green shirt. I'm like, oh, yeah. But, um, you know who's doing push ups here, yeah, before we start? 100%, 100%. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. Don't say that one because I'll, I'll never go back. I'll throw through the city. Boom, boom. Yeah. But, um,. Yeah, make sure there's a good screenshot in it, a nice one. No, we've got, we got, uh, we've got a gruesome one for if they don't subscribe. You know yeah, I mean? 100%, <laughs> bruv, 100%. So you yeah. need to subscribe and like and support the, the cause. And um, what else? If you, if you, if you want to listen to this, um, if you're jogging or, or you're in the gym, whatever, so you can go on Spotify, Google Podcast, and am I missing it? I always miss Apple. Apple, Apple sorry. Yeah. No, none of us have. Oh, you've got an Apple. All right? major ones. Yeah, Andrew guy. Yeah, Andrew. Okay, yeah. So you can download, um, you can do it on Google Podcasts. Mm. So on that note, I'm going to pause there for effect. Mm-hmm. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Sound like.